Here we are with another Saturday Night Live and a very special guest has returned, Kelly. <laughs> Hello, Kelly. Hi, Gino. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice it's to like, see you. Uh, you guys were up here, what, uh, two, three years ago at least, maybe three yeah. years? Yeah, the last year. Yeah, it's been a good three years. 2016, where was it when you were up here? Oh, gosh, was it? I know, it's, it's, it's a while. Like, uh, <laughs> it, I think it's probably it was in the summer of 2016 when you guys were in Toronto area and uh, you came to visit uh, my goodness, it's just like felt like yesterday, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, uh, it was right before we moved uh, to uh, Ecuador. Right, right. And then yeah. as soon as we, well, shortly after we moved, then I started Master Pass. So. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So maybe you want to just uh, give us a, a little uh, breakdown of uh, the past two years, maybe? <laughs> of what's been going on. <laughs> I, uh, you always uh, super inspire myself and many, many, many people around the world with your amazing transformation and, and dedication to, to your soul because that's what it takes, you know. So uh, the floor is yours uh, and uh, go ahead. Well, one of the, one of the, I would say one of the most ex exciting and uh, surprising things that happened, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize this until after our, the, the first interview. Um, I was, let's see, I was, okay, I'll tell you the story about, well, my aunt was doing um, the 23andMe um, genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she called me up and she said, uh, do you know that, you know, we have a genetic ear mutation in our family? And I said, oh my gosh, yes. My, my mom had, um, she was a beautiful woman, but she was born with uh, part of her ear. Well, it was not there. And um, so when I was born, I was born with two ears that were pointy and kind of went into my head, you know, just protruded in into my head and this showed up on the genetic test no no this is the funny part okay. so so oh my gosh so i said gary you know can you take a picture of my ear so i can send it to my aunt because my aunt didn't realize that i had these strange you know mutated ears you know and so i had him take a picture of my ear and um you know he hands me the phone and i'm looking at it and i'm like those are my you know those are my ears you know my ears have always been Pointy, and the only reason that I had, um, and I had another photograph from before, is because my ears would flare from the the red, the, yeah, yeah, from the condition that I had, they would turn bright red. So I took a, a photo of my ear, you know, to show a friend that my ear was red and flaring, is what it was called. So, uh, so I hear I had this. You never knew until red. Gary took a picture. They changed. Yeah. Yeah, everything has changed. So they're they're um, soft and flexible, and I just I I wow, I was just amazed. Um, <laughs> no, not really, not that, really. That's 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 what we're talking about when uh, you know we we mentioned that you know allow the soul to work in autopilot to correct uh, whatever physicality is not uh, in line to the blueprint, and it'll do it. It does it. It, it, you just have to allow the process. Did you have to think about what you didn't even know was happening? No, but, I did not. No, but, but I was in this state, this, uh, this, oh my gosh, I, you call it ecstasy or um, the nectar of God or, or whatever. But the more that I am in this state, the more things seem to, you know, change, uh, not just physically, but that was just, that's just one example. Uh, the other example is my, uh, okay, so two years ago this July, I went um, to our first family reunion, which um, my, both, well, my, my, both my aunt's families were there. And um, so I went to stay with my aunt and I walked into the house and, you know, I'm leaning down to give her a hug and she looks up at me and she's like, did you grow? 
because we were always the same height. We always looked eye to eye. <laughs> and I lo I'm looking down at her. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I never really thought about it. And so I just kind of, you know, we just kind of joked, well, maybe you shrunk, you know? No, no. So, um, so then we, after, you know, I was in Indiana visiting my aunt, we went down to Jacksonville. That's where I lived for 27 years. And I had another friend, Janice, who, um, we were always the same height. So we're out at the beach, you know, we're in the waves and she's looking at me and she's looking up a little bit at me and she asked the same question. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is the second person that's asked me, you know, did you grow? <laughs> and uh, so I want to say that night or the next night, uh, I'm like, Gary, you've got to measure me. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> so he takes the tape measure, you know, and it says five foot three. And I'm going, oh wow, five foot three. I've always been five foot one, you know, one and a little bit like one and a half. It, on my driver's license, it says five foot one. And so there's another. Uh, Almost two inches. Yeah, wow. somewhere between one and a half. I, you know, yeah. I just, at, at, at least one and a half. Yeah, yeah, one and a half, I say. So. Uh, Amazing. That was another uh, um, example of some of the physical changes that uh, happened that I wasn't even aware of, or that I. That, wow, you know, because I was so focused on um you know all the other um issues that i had the physical right. you know the serious challenge the challenges. yeah the, the serious challenges that i had um i thought it would be fun to go so remember the meeting that we had gino and i had i remember i had emailed you a list of current issues to focus on healing so i i haven't looked at them in a long time and so i printed them out yeah, but that was and, another Kelly, right? It's not you. It's another one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're not the same. Right. I am not. I'm totally not the same person. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So you don't think about these things, but it's it's neat to you know. So here I am. I'm printing this out, and uh, so I guess I can go through some of these. Uh, so when you and I met two years ago, I had already you know healed quite you know a lot of symptoms. So I had that sheet. But here are the ones that, you know, I was focusing on during MasterFest. So uh, the first one was cannot stand while taking a shower. Mm -hmm. And so I can do that. Feet will flare in shower bath, but will subside when cool. My feet don't flare in the shower. The only thing is they turn a little bit pink, but uh, there's no flaring. There's no pain. That's just blood a flow. Little, just a few, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unable to leave left foot down while sitting. And I remember when I met with you, you, of course, you're not paying attention, but I had to keep my, I remember, oh, I had to keep my left foot up underneath the other, you know, I couldn't leave it on the ground because of the, it would just, it felt like it was going to explode, the swelling and everything. So I had to keep, I had to elevate it still quite a bit. Um, I still had breathing issues. Um, especially when standing in place. So like we, we just recently went to uh, Bogota and usually in the airports, uh, Gary, well, he used to have to wheel me in a wheelchair and I couldn't stand through the customs lines, you know? Um, and then if I didn't have the wheelchair, I would have to take one of those uh, carts, you know, where they would drive you. So we were, driving or we were walking through you know the airport at Bogota and he's like do you realize how long you have walked we were just walking walking running running you know I'm no longer taking you know those cards I'm no longer you know having to sit in a wheelchair to be wheeled through customs which <laughs> it's kind of funny well you know when no, you're in the wheelchair it's, it's beautiful it's awesome it's yeah. amazing <laughs> so uh yeah. Oh, and then another thing was I was unable to put weight on um, my left foot and my toes so I can stand on my tippy toes. I can jump. Um, we were just recently at, I, I posted this, we were at Hippocrates. And for the first time, I was able to really pound down on, uh, on my foot, you know, and I was just jumping, jumping with joy 
dancing. You know, I hadn't danced in <laughs> so long. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, my toes and my on my left foot were still a little bit stiff. Um, I want to say it was after I've been doing uh, kind of short master fast, full master fast. It was um, I think like my sixth one. Um, I was. Uh, it seems like every time I pass. I, I pass a lot of stuff out of my GI tract, um, and this last time, I, you know, it seems like my body kicks into gear where it's just kicking out stuff, just almost the next day, just, just kicking it out, just constant. It says, thank you, I can clean again. Yeah, so it's just automatic, and so it was just four days of doing this. Um, and after I passed something, this energy just shot through me to the point where it was just too much. But I was so, I felt so, it's that ecstasy, that, that connection, that heart connection. And it was coming through me and just te tears, but I'm dancing and I'm just a stag. I'm in the bathroom, just, I just, oh, was beside myself. And, um, uh, after that was the first time that my foot actually felt like a normal, you know, the left foot felt just, you know, I didn't notice anything. I didn't notice a little, the tingling, a little bit of neuropathy, total flexibility, you know, it's just, yeah. So it seems like with every master fast, whether, you know, it be a little short one, you know, uh, I see, I see results. Yeah, of course. You're, you're, you're stripping the layers each time and you're getting more and more improvements as the time goes on. And that's, that's the way it is. It's, it's simple. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, and then also I had, um, no one could touch my left foot. I would have muscle spasms like the, the, uh, not the heel, but the arch. So Gary couldn't massage, you know, he would try to massage this area of the arch. And if you just touched it, it would, uh, just go into spasm to the point where I would just, wow. oh, just want to hit the, hit the ground. And, uh, it, it doesn't, it's, I don't really have that anymore. You know, you can touch it. Um, I, I noticed a difference with that as well. Um, and then I wrote that my knuckles were kind of purple, um, and they would ache. And I know, I remember, I think I noted that, uh, I was doing just a 24 hour dry fast and during that time my knuckles hurt so bad they were just oh and um, you know I just sat with it it woke me up at like three in the morning I just laid there with it and it lasted probably an hour and then it then it vanished and you know my mom had arthritis my aunt the one with the same condition had uh, real bad arthritis and uh, so I no longer get the, the purple or anything like that. Um, it says I'm unable to wear closed toed shoes. I wear the same shoes, but I'm sure I could, you know, wear the closed toed <laughs> um, The adrenal fatigue, I used to sleep all the time. I think I said that before. I get up like clockwork. You know, I'll go to bed at nine or ten, wake up at six or seven, or sometimes five, five thirty. Um, and then the dizziness has gone away. Uh, oh, another thing, I uh, we love going. We're here in a Cuenca, and we love going to uh, the spa here. It's a uh, thermal waters, and there's lots of minerals in it. I think I was saying that. So we like to go uh, when we're here once to twice a week. And, uh, oh my gosh, it's just, I get in the, the contrast pools. And so I'll just stick my head, you know, as far in as I can go. And, um, I noticed that I could feel, you know, the, the draining in the back Well, now I can turn my head cause I, <laughs> I couldn't turn my head. So I remember meeting Gary and, and I would just kind of turn like this. I would never turn my neck. I'm sure it looked pretty funny. So locked up. And, 
Yeah, it was, it was locked. My neck was completely locked up. Now I can turn it and move it. Now, the funny thing is though, is I can hear, I can hear crunching, which is probably calcification, which, you know, that will dissolve eventually. But uh, yeah, so it's nice to be able to turn my head side to side. Um, my low blood or low blood pressure, I've checked it a few times, is is uh, has definitely gone up. Um, and then the brain swelling, I slept. I think I said I slept with ice, you know, on my head, my neck for over 20 years. I don't have, you know, the brain swelling. Um, I had buzzing too when I would lean over, <laughs> buzzing in my ears. When I met with you, I don't have that. Uh, what else? I bru I bruised easy. I bruised easy. I don't I don't I don't see that. Um, teeth grinding. I don't. Yeah, I don't see that. Now the IBS pain. Um, I had that since oh my gosh, teens, early teens, and the only time I've had a few you know pains is when before I pass something. You know, I'll get it in my, the left side. And uh, once I pass, then, you know, the, uh, there's no, uh, no more pain. Uh, what else? I would say I had a lot of acne scars throughout, oh gosh, from my teens. And I did notice that a lot of people have been saying, like when I went back to visit, you know, oh, they noticed a, a huge change in my in my skin. Um, and just recently, I went to because I get I'll occasionally like every couple one to two years I'll get the you know standard blood test just to see what's going on. And uh, so I met with the doctor, and uh, you know they asked your age, you write in your age, and he was shocked. Um, he thought I was in my thirties. And I'm 46, going to be 47. So uh, I definitely noticed a difference in my skin. Um, oh, and then I also get my eyes checked because I, I had a uh, high eye pressure. So I just recently here in Cuenca went to the eye doctor and he checked my eyes. I just want to see, make sure that the eye pressure, you know, is away. Even with the, you know, with the elevation, because we're at a much higher elevation, it's like 80, 350 feet high up here in Cuenca, so, you know, I went to see, and uh, that came back normal. It was on the high side of normal, which is fine, you know, um, so I was, I was happy about that. Um, yeah, so uh, those are some of the, some of the things that have cleared up over the, the past few years, and it just continues and continues to uh, change as I change. But not just physically, you know. It's uh, it's uh, your thoughts, what you're thinking, you know, your emotions. Because if you wake up every day and you're thinking the same, you know, what when you wake up, what are you thinking? You know, what are your what are some of your th first thoughts? Some before all this, some of my first thoughts were, you know, I'm worrying about everything. What is? Oh my gosh, you know, this deadline that that, you know, I'm going to worry about this person, you know, just, and so now I just, I wake up with just a blank slate, just with gratitude, you know, and, and a love for life. Um, yeah. Jump so. for joy as soon as you wake up. <laughs> yeah. Another day. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a new person. I feel like a completely different person. And I did want to touch on uh, over the past few years, as I've been changing, um, you know, some people become uncomfortable with the changes that you're making. And so sometimes they challenge what you're doing, you know, they're, um, and so what do you do with that? You know, um, what do you do with that? I, I just say it's none of my business what they think. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so, oh, 
there was a particular person who, when I first started, they were guiding me. And over the years, we've kind of went separate ways. And uh, they've, it's almost like they want me to say, okay, you're right. You know, you do what you're doing. And I'll, you know, and I'll change. I don't know. But um, so they're sending me stories of people failing. You know, on this, on, you know, a fruitarian diet, raw vegan, fasting, all the, you know, all these negative things. And, uh, and then I had to reevaluate my relationship with this person. You know, uh, I don't have to explain. I don't have to prove to you what I'm doing. Exactly. No, there's no, there may no be, there may not be any scientific, you know, evidence or, you know, studies of how I've healed, you know, uh, there's no peer review studies. Uh, yeah, you know, okay, I'm anecdotal evidence, but you know what? I am my best study. I, oh my gosh, I, no one can take away what I know here in my heart, you know, uh, and I remember this person saying early on when I, I, there were bouts of this energy that came through me that was just, you know, the, that ecstasy. And this was before I had, you know, found Master Fast, and I wanted more of that. And they said, oh, it's just a fruit high. And I'm like, no, there's absolutely no way this is a, a fruit high. You know, you're high from fruit. No, you know, it's not. And I, and there were just a few times where I felt this. And uh, I really feel like that's what it's about. It's about <laughs> removing the obstructions to the flow of this beautiful energy that comes through us. Um, I feel it, you know, just in my heart. Um, it's our natural state. That, the yeah, natural that's natural, natural state. And we're not, we don't, we didn't know, we don't, we're so, we're, it's there, but we're disconnected and we don't. So it's not, a, it wasn't a, it, well, I knew it wasn't a fruit high, you know? Right. And uh, so the more, this is why I wanted to bring up the, the, the stuff that's, that I'm passing out through the GI tract. The more of the stuff that I pass, you know, out of, you know, the, the more stuff that, the obstructions that I remove, the more of this energy that comes through. And it seems like the more that I'm, I'm transforming the, my physical because I'm changing, you know, oh my gosh, I'm changing my inside. So I'm, it's manifesting on the outside. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, Kurt, uh, Kurt just mentioned, if you feel it dry too, then it's not the fruit. Yes, dry. yes, exactly, exactly. And then I did, and I do. And especially during those, uh, during the 108 days, you know that it's not a fruit high, you know, because you're, you are there and there is, there's nothing, you know, around you, you know, there's no food, there's no, you know, when you're dry fasting, there's, oh, that's yeah. it, that, that was it, that was. Yeah, we all uh, share the same experience, and when we dry, yeah. it's even deeper, the feeling. You know, that's, that's what, what you just shared with us about, you know, you, you love that feeling, and that's what kept me going all these years, I wanted more of it, and more of it, and more of it, and the more I, worked on and, and 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 you know found ways to achieve that it kept you know kept growing there's no limits it's just you can always improve always improve there's no limits there's no limits you just if you're not improving you're there's something in your life that's causing imbalance so you have to go back to the balance mm -hmm. and this is the beauty because there's no plateaus in this lifestyle uh how far do you want to take it it's up to you right yeah <laughs> it's and for me I I feel like, um, in my case, I am, you know, I was very highly obstructed as, you know, obviously through all the symptoms that I had and all the chemicals and everything, I don't push. So I don't, I don't even, I'm not one that even pushes those drives, but yet I'm, my body is expelling, you know, and I'm just going with however I feel comfortable, which I don't push, you know, I go. 24 hours, the best I've ever done is 36 once, 
and I'm still, you know, I'm still expelling. I'm feeling comfortable while doing it. Oh, it says my internet connection. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're going. Oh, okay. It said it was un okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't have, you know, I don't have to race to the finish line. I'm enjoy, like Ellie Tom says, <laughs> I enjoy listening to him, but enjoy the journey, you know. So, you know, it's I don't have to race. I don't have to, you know, go to the extreme. You know, I just slow and steady. That's how most people did it, you know, uh, like, yeah. like Gino and Eddie Tom, they, it took them a long time to, uh, to get where they are I, uh, and, <laughs> and to gather the information. The, ex the extreme is uh, living a very obstructive lifestyle, um, pumping yourself with all chemical drugs, uh, getting your, your body mm -hmm. split open and parts removed. That's what I call extreme, but everybody else sees it the other way around. They see us as extreme. So they're whatever. Sure, sure. Yeah, I used the wrong word, but I mean, um, for me, it was, you know, intense. Um, yeah. More than yeah, it was intense because I I was so obstructed and it was very uncomfortable emotionally, yeah. you know, and physically. And I just I needed to you know slow it down. Of course, we we Bye. we we work at the pace that uh, we can work with. We every, like all the people that we that came through and that pushed themselves they're gone we, we don't hear from them anymore they they burnt they crashed and burned gone and they're doing whatever they're doing <laughs> i don't know yeah many you people know. took master fast as an event yeah. um because when you know and, well, when they broke the fast they realized how difficult it is to break a fast and um and they didn't like that i feel um and so maybe they decided to do their own thing um, and that's why now we have it more like a structure, a structured lifestyle, because it's um, it's really about finding your balance between fasting and eating. And um, you know, when you're ready, go further with the fast, and you know, keep improving yeah. your diet. Right? If we can always improve our diets more, you know. Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna wait for a scientific study, we're gonna be all be buried before it happens, because it's not gonna happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need it. Like, yeah, we're not waiting. Like, why, why do you even need to wait for it? We, we don't like, need it. We, we already we, have the evidence. We have the results. Yeah, like, you know, just, just the, 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 the growing thing. How many of us have grown? Like, I found out by accident, too. I have shared my story about my yoga teacher coming to see me after a couple of years, and he's looking at me. You grew. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Like, I'm thinking, what's this guy talking about? Like, same as you. And, and yeah. then, wow, yeah, and then, and then, as more people started doing it and people started measuring themselves, it, you know, more and more people notice they, 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 they grow, uh, which is just basically restoring to what the body's supposed to be at. It's amazing. You know, but the, your yeah. ear thing, that's just incredible right, when you yeah. see stuff like that changing. You know, that's... Yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful, you know, without even working out or anything like that, just getting into the lifestyle, you'll find that the structure of your body changes. Yes, sure, you can lose a lot of waste and weight at the beginning, maybe the first few months, but uh, my goodness, that, like you will see that, you'll feel that the structure of your body is different without even working out. Yeah, like, the, you know, we call the nectar of God tapping into that, that, that plasma love always flowing, like we say. It's always there. It's always available. We just have to, to tap consciously in. tap into that. And once we are in, in that phase, that's where that beautiful ecstasy feeling, that blissful state, because we're tapping into that plasma love always flowing. The universe is continuously in this flow. And we stagnate ourselves and we separate ourselves from this flow. And that's why we get sick, tired, and whatever. Yeah. So we, we reconnect to that flow. And you don't have to know how, who, what, where, when, why, how. It all works. It's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Even if you did, it was not going to help you. It's not going to make you any happier. That, <laughs> that flow has all the, the, the all knowledge of, from, from all one creation. It's all there. It's complete. You, there's, there's nothing you can add to it. It's like, it's like you know, I, I was just thinking. It's like um, saying, I want an evidence that God exists. <laughs> it's the same thing. I mean, exactly. Yes. You, yes. Yes. I mean, good, oh my God. good luck to that, you know. It's all around us. <laughs> yeah, I found it. So it's all know, around us. All the evidence that I need. Exactly. exactly. Just, it doesn't make us any happier to know and to get the evidence. If, you look, if you're looking at a flower or an ant and you can't see that there's a greater intelligence, then 
I'm sorry, but you, you take your blinders off. Because <laughs> the beauty and the, and the amazing, uh, the amazingness of creation is everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in us. Yeah. We yeah. are. <laughs> and then, um, oh my gosh. So my aunt and I, when I was there visiting, we were, uh, oh, we were having, well, we went to Ikea. But anyway, we were, you know, she went and got lunch and I had a deuce and I'm sitting across from her. And uh, this is my aunt who is very special to me, my mom's youngest sister. And she, you know, at the beginning, when I had started this six and a half years ago, it was about the food. You know, it was. Yeah, That's all all. I'm going to change my diet and I'm going to take this away or add this or do that. And then I'm going to get better. You know, I, I, that's how, what I thought. And, um, and I remember, you know, uh, us talking and I said, you know, it was, it was never about the food. It was, it was never about the food. And it was just, it was such an emotional moment when I realized that, that healing is not about the food or the, it's about, it's about this right here and I pointed to my heart and I'm like it's about this this connection that I have you know that we all have but now I'm aware of it I feel it and uh, that was a just such a oh just a special moment between both of us you know especially oh I know she she looked at me and she said I see God in you and oh my gosh it was just so then we're looking at each other and we see God in each other, you know, and this is from my aunt who goes to mass every single day for 10 years since she healed herself of cancer through her own means, you know, but it was, it was through her own connection to God, through her religion, through her, you know, physical going, you know, the, the Eucharist and, you know, that was, that was her way. And so we were able to look at each other and have this moment and realize, you know, it's not about the food. It wasn't about, you know, taking this, you know, supplement or that. It was about, for me, it was about clearing the obstructions to the, the flow of God through my, you know, into my heart, that spirit, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, you know? Exactly. So. That's, that's the beauty. Like, um, the, the, the amazing thing is, like, from what I've seen in the last three plus decades is, um, uh, using the physicality um, to get to the emotion is uh, a, a, a simple way for all, anybody, anybody who chooses. It's a simple way to access that and start clearing. Um, you know, uh, are we using certain foods and certain drinks and certain that? Yeah, but it's like you said, it's not about their physicality. It has nothing to do with that. We're always going to... Uh, talk about emotion is seed right and that's the key player in the physicality we know that the root the root of what's happening in the physical comes through this we call the plasma vacuum tube <laughs> and once you start clearing that that's how we gain that wonderful access and uh we see all the magic start to happen uh, as you're uh have been realizing for the last uh, several years <laughs> on these um, yeah. wonderful journey it's amazing and so also i found it interesting you know i would pass you know the this plaque and the parasites and i would get kind of excited you know just yeah. <laughs> you know witnessing this stuff coming out of my body thinking wow you know where did i store all this stuff but <laughs> you know, so i'm you know i have to be selective about who I show this stuff because a lot of people don't want to see what's inside of themselves yeah. and they don't want to see that um, there's like a stigma or, or something and they're afraid to, to face you know or to look at or examine you know not just what's physically inside of them but what's emotionally inside of them their thoughts and whatnot um, so you know, some friends, I would learn really quickly who I could, you know, share this with and who I couldn't. You know, they would say, oh, my gosh, stop. That's gross. You know, and <laughs> and uh, and then I even had a friend or someone, the same person that was saying they wanted anecdotal evidence that maybe this stuff 
you know, maybe it's there to help you. And I'm thinking, okay, if it's there to help me, you know, I know that we're full of microorganisms and, you know, different parasites and everything, but if the, this is here to help me, but yet I'm passing it by just, I don't want to say by the bucket, but just I'm passing this stuff and it's coming out and I'm feeling better and these serious, serious neurological, you know, symptoms and uh, all this stuff is changing. Does that, that does not belong in, you know, that is just yeah. ludicrous. It's, it doesn't equate like the, the the body is based on the principles of the universe the working the, the, the workings of the body is based on the workings of the principles of the universe and it, the body has the intelligence of all the universes so uh, when you're in a fast and this is where very few understand this is um, the body will dump everything that's it cannot insane. use or that's interfering with that plaf with the flow it will dump it and this uh, my friends, is um, our realization after these three plus decades of uh, relentlessly looking at all kinds of things and diets and this and that and had never to do with anything that we can add. It was always about subtracting and, and tapping back into the plaf. That's all it is. Very simple. Yeah, I would say, I would tell her something like uh, I also showed or t I didn't show my sister, but I told her because she was uh, criticizing me my first 108 days. I think it was maybe day 70, I went out with her um, and um, we went for dinner with, you know, um, like my other sister and uh, and she was, I think, criticizing me about losing weight and I mentioned um, uh, that I released a big worm that day and she was like, maybe it's supposed to be there. So of course it smells like death it is when it comes to be out. There. Okay, so what <laughs> I would say to somebody now that I am like after years of doing this, I would say yes, they are there to help us when we are full of crap. That's that's what I would say seriously because that's what they're doing. They're feeding and processing our waste. So yes, they are there to help us. She's not wrong. She's right. But if you're full of crap. So you're dumping, right. them, you're dumping them too. They don't, you don't, you know, they're not serving anymore. It's not yeah, and so, so the more that I pass, right? The more of this energy that's coming through. Absolutely. You know, so this, they're not at the same energy as, you know, the rest of my being. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're they're the obstructions. So the obstructions yeah. out, they're out. Simple. It, it, every time you, you, you pass these obstructions, you feel it instantaneously pretty much. Like, uh, there's times where, you know, I, uh, many people probably uh, can uh, relate. You know, you're feeling like you're, you're dying and then oh, yeah. you go past whatever, you know, Especially you go do a head and a head climb. And then you feel like running a marathon. Yes. You know, from one minute to the next after that came out. So, you know. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't matter what anybody says, Kelly. Especially we, after we the know. drive. <laughs> yeah, Kelly. especially after the drive. My goodness, uh, we have the best releases after a drive. Like uh, the weekly drives. Maybe it takes a day, two days of drinking before these interesting things come out. But I would, I would for me, always the inter most interesting releases of the week would be after the drive, like a day or two. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I wanted to show some if I can. Here, wait. Of course, yeah. yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, you can talk us through it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, I, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what I had been passing. I mean, we're talking two feet, you know, real thick. It's not silly, I mean, it's very thick. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I even, you know, took a fork just, to, you know, a knife just to see. It's very, very thick. Um, I mean, this, this is, is yeah. yeah, this does not belong inside of me. These are, this is leaving. And as they are leaving, I am feeling, a hundred, I'm feeling, well, I'm a different person. I'm feeling so much better. This was just like so thick, um, rubbery you know, mucus, there's, you know, something attached to it. Um, 
Amazing. My gosh. And so, and this, you know, I was diagnosed with Lyme. You know, I don't, I don't get focused on, you know, analyzing it, you know, uh, but this looks like maybe possibly the biofilm, you know. Uh, okay. We all have it. Who doesn't have biofilm? Yeah, yeah. So, and then I mean, got my gosh, look at this stuff. Wow. You know, and the more that I pass with this stuff, the, the more better you I. Feel, yeah. Yeah, the better you feel. That yeah. was just that was something. That's just me. Yeah. This yeah. Is nice. Just. Wow. Oh, That's this one right here. I thought, well, you hear I'm having fun, but. Uh, <laughs> I thought, well, you know what? We're in Ecuador. It's a few dollars. I'm going to just send this into the lab and see what they say. They couldn't identify it. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, there was bacteria present, but they couldn't identify. Yeah. Wow. wow. So it's yeah. an alien. <laughs> not, 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 not even genetically? Like they tried. <laughs> well, I, maybe they don't have that. You know, um, I don't know how. Uh, just by looking at it, maybe they couldn't identify. No, they, I don't know how they test it here. You know, I don't know how in depth they, you know, the facility is, but, and so. Uh, yeah, you see some, some, a lot of uh, things that you have, there's blood attached. Yeah, there's blood. Huh? And uh, that's. Uh, oh, but it might be watermelon. <laughs> it might be watermelon, but I mean, some, some of the other ones, like the, inside the things that look like the worms, which they could be. There's like blood you can see and so there's on and so forth. Bit, yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. But like uh, those. Yeah. Reddish. Yeah, you know. Some of them are reddish, no, not all of them. But you know, that's. Uh, but yeah, maybe it's a watermelon too. Some people have yeah. fear when there's blood present. Like that. What is that inside of that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, the the body knows exactly what it's doing. Whenever there, whenever there's blood, there's healing happening. Um, as long as you're not, uh, you know, losing uh, half a quart <laughs> or a quart. Because what time. happens? Yeah, they attach. They attach to the wall, right? And so when they let go. Yeah. Oh, geez. Not like that. Just bundles would just shoot out. <laughs> you know? Uh, all in the master class? Oh, this is all, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From uh, all the different ones? Or, or yeah, they, see how you see these are seem to be uh, more in, in, I don't know, they just look different, but these are later. So these yeah. are more recent, like this one. Okay. Um, this was just, uh, that was the four day one just recently so i'm this is a first i don't this, i've seen these before many times yeah i've seen them yeah, like, yeah. this one looks like uh, some reddish that could be are you you're doing you were using always watermelon yeah one? yeah it's always watermelon yeah so that could be it but uh, uh maybe maybe yeah i don't know but uh i noticed that they're looking different it's looking thicker and just uh just has a different hmm. Yeah, so that's see how they're looking diff they're looking different. Yeah, the bodies than the ones from before. There's more and just watermelon juice. It's absolutely it, it, amazing. It, it tastes like candy when you uh, when it's cooked. <laughs> My goodness! That's oh, I know. <laughs> you know, I have a, well, a page on the master. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look at the ear. Oh yeah, so there's the it's the before and on the left. Completely different. The whole top left side, it's grown much thicker. It's more round. Wow. Holy geez. Like the inner ears huge. part is also, the, the shape has changed. Yeah, uh, so there's, on the right, it's just a, on the, the top, you know, it's it's thicker and it's yeah. it's not stiff. Um, yeah, the, the whole in, inside part's completely changed. The, 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 the angle of it and the shape of it, the bottom's more rounded. It's, it's, a, it's like a, yeah. a completely different ear. Yeah. It is. Like, you know, you, people say that it is impossible. What do you mean it's impossible? It's, <laughs> it's much, not impossible. It's much smaller too, right? It's smaller. Smaller? The left one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's not like it grew into my, e like it grew into my head, the side of my head. Yeah. Like it's, there's nothing hardly coming out of the, of the head area. Over here, it's, it's grown out. It's, it's yeah. a big, the ear's grown bigger. Okay, okay. It wasn't, the ear was not able to complete its proper shape and form and size because of obstructions and once you release the obstructions it expands itself to wherever it needs to be 
and that's what we call MAGRAS positioning or field strength. Um, you know, and the only thing in the way is obstructions. That's it. Uh, we don't have to know who, what, where, when, why, and <laughs> it's uh, dump the obstructions, let the magic unfold. This is just amazing. Wow. Oh, I'm going to stop share, I guess. I don't, is, am I on there? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we hear you. Yeah. Is the picture, I think it, uh, can you see anything? Uh, we still see the ear. Okay, now, okay, you're back. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. this, so there, I'm airing, I'm airing it all. I'm an open book, and it feels good. <laughs> this, this, this is, Kelly, where very few understand that. When you share, that's part of releasing obstructions. And so yeah. many are holding on. They don't want to share. They're only going to go so far. And you know, um, my my first interview, I shared so much about my his, you know, my my history, my past, and uh, doing that in a sense was it was therapeutic, um, you know, because I had learned to keep secrets, you know, to not share exactly. um, fear of judgment, um, you know. I mean, I had a lot going on, you know, <laughs> throughout my entire life, and you know, never air your dirty laundry, you know, was our family motto. And my mom, you know, she died at, at 49 and I'm close to her age. And she took all that, all her secrets and all that pain to her grave with her. And I was, if I didn't open up and I didn't share, I was, I was right behind her. You know, I was, I was, I wouldn't be here. And, and I see my aunt, who is my mom's oldest sister. I see her doing the same thing she's gonna take all that pain and all her all the secrets that you think you know that you have to to the grave with her i mean she even you know her my mom had a conversation before my mom passed and my mom shared some some information with her and she still you know it's just it's ridiculous it's just it's not doing us a, a service um I, not to say that you know I have to go around and say, oh, look, you know, this is my story. It's when you, when you realize that you are not your story, when you go above and beyond the exactly. story. Yeah. And then, then you get to the point where you can share your story and there's no emotional charge to it that you know that uh, that's what it, you know, that's when the healing took place for me when I could share this openly and I think I, we were talking to Steve um, here I would go to these Al-Anon meetings and I couldn't open up I would just sit in these meetings and cry you know and I did I was afraid to share I would have been terrified years ago to come here on Masterfast and share with whoever you know here I'm sharing pictures of my you know <laughs> <laughs> Your deepest secrets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's, uh, and, and it's, it, I feel like it's opened up um, communication between my one, my one aunt and I, you know, the other aunt, we don't talk. She doesn't want to acknowledge that, you know, that I've healed myself because she has the same condition that I had. Um, and she's comfortable in, in that, yeah. um, you know, that place. And I respect that, um, but it's funny because I just recently, you know, uh, let's see, I guess it'll be two years, but I went to the family reunion. And so all my family's there, except my aunt. My aunt doesn't want to come. She doesn't want to see me. Wow. She doesn't, you know, I, and before that I had offered to, to see her, um, I think it was over Christmas time and she doesn't want to see me. She doesn't want to acknowledge that I, that I, that, that I've healed myself and that this, that this, that this could be a possibility for her. Um, so I don't take that personal. Um, in the past I would have, I would have been really upset, you know, that my aunt, this is our first family reunion and she's not even going to be here. And I noticed that the family dynamics, seem to be the same you know her daughter's upset she's drinking heavily she's crying because her mother isn't there 
um, you know, it just, Tough. but I realized that I, I showed up and I just, I just was present and I brought just, an, I was just a different person and it seemed like the whole family dynamics changed, you know, uh, we had so much fun. It was just, oh, I canoed, you know, I just, I was full of so much energy. I, and this was after the 108 days. So that was in, what was that? It was in July. So it was that July after, you know, the 108 days. I think I did 13 before I went. So I was thin, but yeah, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I was so full of energy in my family. You know, I'm sure they noticed I didn't have the flaring red feet. You know, I was mobile. I jumped in a canoe. I'm thin, but I'm fit. You know, I was fit. Uh, I was canoeing, you know, just having so much fun and I could enjoy my time with them. Um, but in the past, I would have focused on, you know, the, the, the family dynamics, the, the dysfunction. But now I realize I don't have to, I'm a different person and I don't have to, I don't have to play, you know, I don't have to play the, exactly. the, the game or the, 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 the story, the story's changed. Yeah, yeah, all these stories, you know, we're just mirrors of each other. And, um, you know, I call it the Neanderthal type of uh, old way of thinking, you know, the keep all secrets and so on. And so my parents were the same, right? You know, don't share this, don't ever, you got to keep it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, uh, it's, it's so um, uh, imbalanced to our life, doing, uh, living that way. Um, it, it does not do anything positive when you hold things in we so, have to help each other you know yeah and you know we're just mirrors of each other and what do you share you're we're sharing each other's experiences because we're all we're all one at the end of the day so it's no big deal when you understand that and tap into that laugh and allow the energy to just flow and, and watch the magic unfold um it's and then, amazing yeah. and then believing in what you're doing um i remember i remember this story well i was young and uh oh gosh my my, my stepdad i had uh warts on my hand as a child like little warts and he told me this story i remember he he was so convincing and he said my father when i was younger he he actually bought this from me <laughs> so he's like i'm gonna buy these warts this is silly. He's like, I'm going to buy, I'm going to give you a dollar and I'm going to buy, and they are going to go away. You know, they are going to, they are going to disappear like they did for me. And so he's like, here's the dollar. We went through the whole thing and I took the dollar and I really believe, I, you know, I can't remember the details. I was, I was young. I really believe the story that this will go away. He, this is, you know, and so within, I can't remember the time frame, but they went away because I a hundred percent totally believed that you know the you know he purchased his story i believe the story um Amazing. and then your frame of mind so when i was younger i was uh oh gosh it was one of my birthdays and i was allergic to milk big go figure <laughs> mm -hmm. and so i ended up in the hospital uh overnight and the next morning they had an IV in me and I'm just feeling so sorry for myself. I'm crying and I'm just, oh, it's just very dramatic, you know? And my mom, I re I'll never forget this. She, she's like, Kelly, she's like, look over there. Look at that little girl. And so, you know, I'm just sobbing about this, you know, an IV. Oh, it hurts, you know, oh, I'm just so much pain. And so I remember looking up across the room and there's this little girl like oh my gosh this little girl she's burned from head to toe and she just jumped out of bed just oh and i remember she's stretching her arms and it's just like a sunshiny day and she's just full of joy and just so happy and i'm watching her and i'm like wow you know this girl physically right is burn i mean you you can't fire you, burn you mean yeah disfigured just oh. i remember just and i'm like this girl is oh my gosh she's she's reflecting her in what am i trying to say she's oh 
she's reflecting the inside, not the outside. She's reflecting the beauty of the inside externally. And so it's like her state of mind is not reflecting this, awesome. you know, disfigured. Yeah, just she's she was just so present and pure and just, yeah, full of love. Um, and here I am, you know, just crying about this little IV in my arm. Oh, it hurts. I feel, you know, and she's waking up with this gratitude and love for life. You know, this, so that was, that was a, you know, just, you know, just one of those lessons in life that, you know, you, uh, you remember, but, uh, amazing. It's, it's great that you, you learned at a young age, you know, you, you observed and learned small little things here and there. Yeah. And I think they all kind of just, uh, come together, don't they? Mm -hmm. Um, like, um, and then also another really important thing I think that I learned early on was that you are not, you are not your physical body. So, you, you know, we're so, uh, our focus is so much on the physical body that we don't realize that we're much, much more than that. Um, when I was around 19 or 20, I had a, I was asleep and um, I was up, <laughs> while I was asleep, I was up floating, you know, up above my body and I could see myself, you know, looking down, but I panicked. And so then I snapped back in my body, my heart's pounding. I woke up and I think, oh my gosh, I think I was dying. You know, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, thank God, you know, I just, so that, that was one incident where I, you know, I realized that, you know, we're not all just physical. I'm separate from this physical body. Um, and then, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, so there was there was this uh, there was this time where I was. Uh, it was when I started Dr. Morris, and I was on. Oh gosh, I remember I had to juice on the floor because I couldn't stand, and so I'm on the floor and I'm I'm having a real hard time, and I'm just sobbing. I'm just sobbing. Oh. And while I'm sobbing, I, I back out, like I, I completely back out of my thoughts and I completely back out. That's the only way I can describe it of my emotions. And I realize that I am, I'm back here and I'm observing. So I, I could talk and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm observing, I'm backing out of everything. And I realize that I am this consciousness that is not my thoughts, not my emotions and not my physical body. So I think that had a lot to do with, uh, you know, realizing that it's not just about the food, <laughs> the physical food. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, your, your, your baby blues, they've uh, brightened up even more. They, your eyes yeah. were dark before, right? Um, I don't know. Well, you know, people do notice that my eyes are very, uh, very blue. Did you, um, uh, did you take your iris photos before? I did. So I have before and I have, uh, oh gosh. Yeah, I have one pretty recent, but I haven't really put them side by side. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then here's another story. We There's so many synchronicities that I think that happen, you know, when you're, when you're connected. We were at the spa. Um, this past Monday and we met this we just happened this guy came in and he spoke English and so we were thrilled you know and uh, we got to know him a little bit we're talking and he tells a story about how he um, dove into a pool he lost consciousness and he literally died and then he came back and so when he died he was outside you know outside of his body and he could see what was going on and uh, and so he was he was sharing how when he came back he didn't want to come you know he didn't want to come back it was so beautiful that feeling that he felt he didn't he wanted to stay you know he wanted to stay but he's back and so he's talking to me 
And he says, I would give anything, you know, I would love to feel that way again, you know, but I know when I die, I'll feel that way. And I said, I turned, I said, I said, um, how, I said, um, how would you, what did I say? What if I told you that you could feel that way, that you could feel that way right now, right here, you know, that, that feeling that you're describing to me that you could feel it in his eyes, you know, he's like, feel it. I'm like, yes, you know, I really feel like that was, you know, that was part of my, that's my, part of my healing. And so then we shared story, you know, stories and it was just, it, it's just those beautiful synchronicities that, that reaffirm that, you know, that I, I'm on the right path, you know, that all these things, interesting things show up. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and then there's another thing when we were at, um, we were at uh, the Joe Dispenza. You and I were talking about that before. Um, the he they talk about a lot about heart brain coherence, and so I like that. You know where the heart and the brain are communicating, and uh, your heart. You know you can measure your heart rhythm pattern uh, with this device, and so I thought, well, you know, I've, Gary's using it. And uh, he's seeing very good results. I'm going to hook myself up to it and see if I'm in heart-brain coherence. And so my first try, I was in heart-brain coherence. And so I think, oh, you know, his work, yeah, you know, it really uh, coincides with, you know, what we're doing. But, yeah, so it was really great. And then with the heart rate variability, you have a, you know, the heart rhythm pattern when you're in a stressful state, it's real jagged, you know, and, uh, and when you're in a, you know, positive, uh, you know, gratitude, love and everything, it's more of just a smooth, smooth sine wave, you know, and uh, I think it's, it's really interesting that, uh, that, you know, I hook myself up and I'm, I'm, I'm in that, in that state. I think uh, I think my goal is to be in that state even during times of uh, of stress where you know your environment is unpredictable because for me you know my environment as a child was so unpredictable and chaotic that it, it sends me you know it tri you know sends me into that old patterns you know the old thought patterns survival uh, yeah so when the riots you know uh, we live in Ecuador and uh, they removed the gas subsidy tax here and everyone, you know, was doing demonstrating, but it wasn't just about the tax gas uh, subsidy, that tax. There was a lot more to it, you know, um, the IMF, but anyway, so everyone's very upset as they, you know, they have a right to be. So I was tuning in, you know, here I'm in Ecuador. I've never experienced anything like this. And uh, what do I do? You know, I'm, I'm operating in fear mode. Um, so I'm tuning into the news, you know, the expat news. I'm seeing the violence. <laughs> I'm seeing roads blocked, buildings being burned. Uh, they're saying we could run out of food. They stopped uh, the traffic going in and out. Uh, you know, you can't get gas. So your mind is just, my mind is like, oh, wow, you know, I've never been through this. I need to monitor it. You know, we've got to have food. <laughs> um, we've got, you know, gas. Uh, how are we going to, you know, your mind's just running just crazy. And I noticed that everybody was also, you know, like, we went to the store. I could feel the fear. You know, I could feel everybody's rushing for this food. They're grabbing, you know, just, uh, it's it, but it was yeah, it was quiet. You, you could cut the, the the stress with a knife. It was just, yeah. it was. So I had to, after however many days of doing that, you know, I'm monitoring, and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is the old me. You know, I've reverted back to that pattern. You know, where I'm, 
in fear. And I, I'm a turn, you know, I'm, I'm soul and I'm going to be okay. No matter what worst case scenario, my mind's going to con, you know, my mind's conjuring up the worst case scenario so I can survive. You know, I got to figure this out. I got to figure that out. <laughs> but the moment that I let go and I started going into nature, we were walking down the beach. I'm appreciative for where I am. There's no chaos where I am. Uh, I start, you know, tuning into different videos, uh, you know, how to, um, oh gosh, Greg Braden and, you, you know, just, uh, you know, just how to survive in changing time or not survive, how to thrive, right? In changing, you know, times of extreme. So I start tuning into all these, you know, these uplifting videos and then I go inward. I start, you know, just uh, meditating. You know, we all have our own personal way. I go inward. I realize that, you know, I don't have to have that external environment influence what is going on inside of me because that's what I was doing. And I remember you had a, a live thing and, and I kind of posted something about it and you said, let's pray for peace, balance, and correct conduct, you know, for Ecuador, I think, or just for, I think you did, or, you know, just countries that are going through this. And after we did that, I'm, you know, logging off of Facebook and I'm scrolling and I see that they came to a uh, agreement where they're going to meet, you know, with indigenous and they're going to have talk, you know, work things out. This was after 13 days. And so, yeah. Coincidence. Um, <laughs> uh, Coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought, well, so I feel like these are tests, you know, just to see, for me to see uh, if the old programming is still running, where I saw that it was, and then I could correct it. You know, I could swiftly, you know, say, hey, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to operate from this old, you know, self running from the old fear program. Isn't, isn't, so, huh? isn't it beautiful? You're yeah. learning at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah, it's one big giant classroom you're down here. You're really learning. I mean, you're doing a great job observing and changing. It's amazing. Yeah. This, uh, this device that you have to measure, is it, uh, what does it actually measure? Um, the heart rate, heart rate, um, heart rhythm pattern. The heart rhythm pattern. Oh, okay. Yeah, heart rhythm. Yeah, so it's like the heart rate variability. You guys have a device? Yes. We do. Uh, Gary got one. And then um, I just recently started, you know, reading up on it. And um, because I have a psychology degree, I, um, I went ahead and got online and applied to learn to become a practitioner. But I've got, you know, I just kind of dove in for it, my cat. Um, so yeah, so it's heart math. Try uh, try listening to regularly tuned music and then uh, music tuned in four three two and see what happens. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. Let I was uh, oh I know I was um and then the second time I measured because I've only done it twice so far. Um, Gary does it every day, which is wonderful. He's 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 seeing great results, but um the second time. He uh, hooked me up while we, because you can put it on your ear right here, just clamp it, and um, it's on your iPhone on your screen, and um, so I'm watching the screen, and we're at the Joe Dispenza uh, workshop, and everything's real chaotic. You know, and I, I went, I wanted to see if I was in, you know, their heart uh, coherence, and so I hook myself up, and I'm in the, I'm in that state. And, but I'm really excited, you know, because I'm there and everybody's around dancing and, and uh, he hasn't come in yet, but the energy is really high and everyone's just, and the only time I got out of coherence is when I stopped and I thought about it, you know, I started, you know, so I started using my mind. I wasn't, I think I was in more in my, you know, I was just, you know, in that coherence. But I, when I started to try to analyze, oh, you know, all this is going around me going on around me and I'm incoherent I, and then I had you know mm. so uh, yeah it's, it's pretty interesting mm. awesome. I look forward to learning more <laughs> yeah. and uh, breathing helps a lot too you know the slow diaphragmatic 
you know, breathing. Breath work, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it helped me a lot, for sure. And that started early when I was doing the tapering. My friend, uh, he was a biofeedback specialist, and so he hooked me up to a machine as well. And uh, yeah, I, I told you this last time, but he said, you know, you can detox all you want, but if you're not breathing properly, you know, because I was breathing so fast, because I was in the fight or flight, you know, for 40 years of my life, I'm in that state. And he, obviously, he, you know, could see it. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, the breathing and, and your state of mind. Like for us, you know, when you master fast, the breathing is, it balances itself out, by the way. But it's, of course, it's good to learn how to do the techniques and then it, you balance yourself even more. On the master fast so like um for example uh, uh liquid master fast versus eating i find that boteco um which is uh, sh like less breathing uh boteco is uh, way more more like it's um i can do it uh for longer i can achieve it much easier um and uh, when i drive fast it's even deeper I can go deep road with Boteco. It's much easier to do it. Um, it's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the so it, the detox does does help you breathe better, but it's always good to have a tool, you know, to to practice as well. The the, the more you eat, the more you have to breathe. The less you eat, the less you have to breathe. It's, it's yeah. very simple. Interesting. So they're, they're connected. Yeah. It's uh, much easier to breathe and. Uh, uh, the efficiency of the breath is much more so when you're empty. Yeah, like, like and, and Butik is like breathing like a baby, and the babies do not have to learn how to breathe. They mm. just breathe properly. Yeah, and, and uh, the, for babies, you know, uh, you cannot, uh, you wouldn't notice if they are breathing or not, and that's why they have to come very close to them, I think, to see if they're alive uh, sometimes, you know, uh, because they, you can't see their breathing, you can't see the movement. Because they don't move so much. Until we start feeding them. Until we start feeding them, and then it's um, much more. Plugging them up. <laughs> yeah. Then when you feed them uh, formula, like like oh, I I had I uh, looked at my uh, what do you call it baby? I have a little card that my mom saved. You know, your little baby wellness or whatever. They put me on formula right off the bat. So yeah, I must have been breathing really. <laughs> me too. You too, right? <laughs> have a new breast milk, right? <laughs> And you were having meat uh, formulas, right? From what I understand. When I started eating. Oh, when you started eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Baby food, yeah. <laughs> and he loved to eat, his mom says. You love to eat the meat formula. <laughs> Was it a uh, formula or? or Baby she, food. She would make food, okay. Baby food. All right. They call it baby food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In jars. In jars. Right. Oh, yeah, that's what I had to. She would feed him yeah. one, he wants another one. But the small ones were not enough. She had to buy me the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was pretty hungry growing up, for sure. Um, I think I shared that before. I ate. I, ate. I would eat as much as my husband at the time. I ate a lot. I ate a lot. Are you overweight? No, and I was so thin. I was super thin. That's what's so funny when people comment about, oh, after the, you're thin. Wait a minute, you know, I've always been pretty darn thin, you know, my entire life. The only time that I wasn't, and I really wasn't overweight, but I had that water weight from the, all the drugs. You could see it in my face. And I, I looked a lot older too. So, uh, but yeah, I've always been thin. And it's probably because I was feeding my friends. <laughs> no, yeah. now yeah. that's perfect <laughs> yeah they decided to take a vacation permanent vacation they don't need to be around anymore <laughs> yeah. well i'm no longer feeding them garbage right <laughs> and really not just physical garbage right the mental garbage you know the the, the thoughts my i'm a completely different person my thoughts are are different um, my emotions, you know, so uh, I believe, uh, they do affect our um, emotions big time. I totally believe they affect our emotions. Uh, but, uh, but again, it's our responsibility that they are there. They're only there to help us. I totally believe they are there to help us. 
Um, actually, uh, um, there was an article about uh, bat parasites or whatever, worms or something, uh, feeding on heavy metals, for example. You know, feed, feeding on heavy metals. So basically, instead of having uh, the heavy metals circulating all over the body and maybe uh, damaging some, uh, you know, vital organs and like, um, um, you know, putting our lives in danger, um, they would actually feed on the heavy, heavy metals and uh, uh, concentrate them just like a tumor. You know, it would concentrate in one area instead of going and circulating all over the place. Um, okay, and then, so the body, you know, it's all very intelligent, you know. The creation is intelligent. Mm -hmm. It has all the, uh, everything is in place for a reason. But, you know, then you got to deal with the waste from them. And then uh, when you're, like, people go on these uh, uh, crazy parasite killing uh, regimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, not, not if you're not getting rid of, rid of the die-off, you have other problems there. This is why we don't focus at all on that stuff. Just... I mean, I can imagine also when they die, like when, like you want it out. That's when, when fasting, teams. it is very toxic, and the smell, not to mention the smell, is horrific when stuff like that come out. Um, I, what I believe is like um, the pores would open up when they die. You know, the pores open up, and uh, the uh, whatever the toxins come out of them. Oh, they start putrefying. Look, any any meat that's not living is going to putrefy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Get them out. <laughs> they'll they'll leave. They, they don't, when you clean and change the environment, they're not going to stick around. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. So the focus is always the obstructions, the cause, not the, not the yeah. uh, parasites. Yeah, the Gary's saying we probably live longer with them than without them, but they sure can can keep uh, doing the old program eating all day, or they will overtake and kill. Yeah. That's exactly right. Um, they're, they're there to help us. And uh, it's oh, because yeah. we're full of caca and they're clean. They're helping us clean up the caca. But yeah, when uh, it comes to the point where they take over, bye bye. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, uh, anything else that you wanted to share or to take some questions? Whatever you want to do. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Uh, <laughs> the floor is open if anybody uh, wants to ask Kelly anything. I have a question. Um, <laughs> how, how are you uh, living? Um, uh, like, what's your lifestyle like these days? Is MasterFast uh, still part of your journey? Uh, yeah, um, I would say I'm more of, I'm either 100% on, you know, full MasterFast. Um, or not but when I'm not I'm I'm in my routine which is you know I wake up I have I, I drink a lot of juice I uh, I feel great you know I, I wake up and I make you know like orange turmeric whatever we have here we have a lot of fruits here so like uh, this past week I bought we got a big huge box of uh, mandarins so I'm making mandarin juice with you know, coconut water, vanilla, uh, then we'll eat fruits and uh, I'll make, you know, we'll make smoothies and then at night we'll have a meal. Well, at night, I guess anywhere between three to two to four probably and we'll have a meal. So when we're eating and so then that meal, I would say, you know, is mainly salads and like soup. Um, sometimes we'll do cooked, you know, like, uh, um, I'll be on a Brussels sprout, steamed Brussels sprout kick, you know, where, uh, yeah. uh, but you know, I can feel a difference. Yeah. Um, and then, w. you know, if we're, if we're traveling, then, we, you know, I'm, I'm in a little foodie mode where, you know, we were in Bogota and there was a Matthew Kenny restaurant and I, it's just, I love Matthew Kenny's food. <laughs> and so if I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to have a special meal, it's going to, I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to, you know, and so that? Matthew Kenny, he's a chef. His food is so good. Just his, it's very good. Mm. And uh, so, you know, we went to his restaurant. We really enjoyed it. Um, and then, but. Is it a vegan restaurant or just a. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, he has raw vegan and vegan. Oh, okay. Um, 
it's just really nicely the flavors uh, and I notice you know when we eat you know we enjoy it we don't you know we're not going to beat ourselves up no. um, it's it's with uh, you know I notice sometimes Gary would get upset you know and uh, angry you know say he ate something he didn't feel good and then there goes their emotions you know that are you know so when you eat you know eat with with love and uh, appreciation for the food um i really i've always ate really slow and i really feel like people when they eat they should be mindful as they eat so i eat so slow so incredibly slow <laughs> and i notice that a lot of people don't you know they just are just, oh my gosh, just shoveling, just eat so fast. And a lot of the times they are done like four times, you know, quicker than, and I'm still just sitting there eating. So even when I meet with like old coworkers, when I went back to visit um, in Jacksonville, we were for lunch, I'm like, oh geez, you know, I better just try to eat a little bit, you know, more, I don't know. And, <laughs> but, um, I know I noticed that and so when we went to Hippocrates you know that's you know considered you know healthier food you know the raw the salads and everything but it's a buffet and so people are piling you know piling the food on and what do I do you know I've never been there I piled the food on I had this big plate and so did everybody you know our two friends at the table and everybody shut sh <laughs> You know, we're, and I'm looking around and they're shoveling in the food. Just, oh my gosh, every, oh, so full. I hardly ate my plate, you know, and then I took it with me and I had it for, I want to say three days, you know, <laughs> for my meal. And, and, uh, and another thing though that turned me off, which is I, they have a garlic shot, garlic. I had never done garlic juice, like garlic, just Whoa. juice. And so I'm standing there, oh yeah, that's fun. So I try, oh wow. I knocked you out. Garlic is uh, very irritating. No? Oh yeah, I was belching. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was ear. I don't know. <laughs> it was like I was at a, a bar and did a shot of, I don't know, whiskey. You know, it just did me in. So um, yeah, I just, as far as eating, uh, mindful eating, you know, appreciating your meals. And I noticed that. You know, when we do eat out, which we don't that often, but when we do, we're like here in Cuenca, we're attracted to the restaurants where the the chefs are so loving, you know, and they're just, oh, wow. You know, they just put a lot of love into their, their, their food, you know, like this woman that, that uh, does a vegan lunches and she'll do a salad and soup and uh, she's just, you know, just the sweetest and just so full of love, you know, and you know, she puts that into her food. So, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So that's where we are. Um, as far as uh, master fast. Yeah. I mean, I've done it. Oh, I have it written down. I sent it to you, but what, seven, seven times, I think. And, uh, in a few days we'll start another one and we'll, I lately I've been doing short, shorter ones, you know, just like a week, four days. Um, I really like doing it before we travel, you know, so like, uh, yeah. How often so, do you go? How often? Oh, it's kind of, you know, I, it's, I want to say it's random, but, uh, it's whenever I feel, uh, you need oh, to clean up. <laughs> huh? Whenever you feel you need to clean up, empty out. Yeah. Kind of, I don't want to say maintenance, but as far as dry fasting, I just don't feel, uh, you know, the long dry fast is, I, I just, uh, I'm going to give it a break for a little while, you know. Um, Are you doing any weekly dry? No. You're taking a break. No. So, uh, but no. and, and I, you know, I am on the thin side. So uh, my body hasn't, and you know, I do feel like I need to uh, do more exercise. So in the, uh, at the spa, they have a pool, so I've been swimming and we've been walking, but I would like to do more um, actual physical, you know, exercise. That's one thing that uh, that I have not yeah, put my attention into. And I, 
and I, I feel like that would be good for rebuilding. You know? And you know, before I couldn't exercise, right? I couldn't even get out of bed. I couldn't stand, let alone exercise. So, uh, but now, you know, I can. So. Yeah, why not? Even when you're fasting, it's great. I actually don't like to, uh, to work out when I'm eating. I like to work out only when I'm fasting. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it's much easier. And then with dry fasting, um, I don't know if it's the chemicals that are still in my body, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's still really rough for me. It's, um, so I do, you know, I do do minimal, you know, I do the windows are minimal. Um, the weekly is minimal if I can't make it to 24 and I do it at 20, 20 or 22, cause it's, it can get rough. And it seems like I can snap into the elimination mode much faster, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can move into a semi-dry or you can do colon feeding. There's so many options uh, to allow yourself to, to expand on that. Yeah, to make it easier. Uh, you can do, there are different levels of like the dry and uh, the easiest one would be to uh, do colon feeding where you wash your colon while you're dry fasting. So that would make it much easier. Yeah, that would make the dry much easier because it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's basically you're detoxing if you're feeling tired when you're um, so I could go through the, I have a question. So I could go through, you know, the, the whole week doing, you know, my regular, you know, 12 hour dryer, you know, windows. And then for the dry, I could do the dry, but are you saying at the same time that I can do the colon feeding during that dry? That would be very helpful. It's just the, yeah, well, the weekly, not the daily. The daily is, you're talking yeah, about that's what I mean for the weekly. Right. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. That's called colon feeding. So you're washing from the bottom. Yeah. What were you going to say? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we're not taking anything in the mouth. We're just cleaning. Washing. From day one, we're deciding, mm -hmm. okay, we'll do the colon feeding. We're washing. That's all we're doing. Nothing else. Just washing every day. Yeah, that, so you, you can, can do, do last like, your you know, fast like Three, that. four, five, nine days, whatever you like. But you don't have to if you feel like, okay, you're, you're trying to get into the 24-hour weekly. Then you can include the, uh, uh, the colon, the washing your colon. Yeah. And with me, I'm so thin where I feel uncomfortable when I get to a certain point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's uh, simple. Yeah, the, the thinness really is not, uh, I mean, 24 hour dry per week, I think is okay. You're not going to lose so much weight. Yeah. And, I, and you know, when I did do the 108 days, I plateaued, you know? Yeah. So on the weight. The way you didn't go any but, lower. But remember, that's 108 right. days. 24 hours versus 108 days is like, you can't compare. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, 24 hours is not, you, you lose and you will gain it the next day when you eat or it's when you just, drink. Yeah, you have to just think of an analogy of the sponge. We're just squeezing the sponge and then we're washing, squeezing, washing. That's all we're doing. You might lose long term, um, like uh, in a few months, if you keep doing the 24 hour, but it's good for you. Your body is only losing waste. Weight, extra weight is extra waste. So no, it's okay, let it go. You're not going to get, how much thinner can you get? You can only get so thin. Yeah, and the more that I do, like I said, th there is a huge connection between the stuff that I'm passing and the, you know, my symptoms resolving, and there are serious, serious symptoms. So, uh, and I've always been, so been, you know, and I noticed, you know, when I was younger, during a stressful time, I would lose weight, and uh, during those riots, you know, where I was stressed, I was in that same state. I wasn't fasting, but I was losing weight because of the state of my mind, it, you know? So, uh, yeah, I feel like... Um, Controlling your body, I, balancing out I, the gym. Yeah, I would, I would suggest to, you know, allow the uh, dry fasting to open up and continue that. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be fearful of it. Embrace it. And, uh, At least once open, a week. Yeah, yeah, once a week, minimum. Uh, you know, we like to do three days uh, mm -hmm. at the month, every month. Uh, but you know, like I said, you can, there's many variations, like, uh, uh, there's a couple of people who could barely do 24 hours and then, you know, now they're a couple of years later, they're able to do three, four five days of dry fast. It's practice. Uh, it's just practice. Just keep practicing. Um, this, this week you do 20 hours. Okay. Next week go 20, you can do 24 hours the week after that. Yeah. Because it's almost the same feeling, but now you have more confidence and you have your, your body's a little bit cleaner. So it's easier for you to go, to go further. So.
Lots, lots of things. <laughs> the uh, the fresh I juices. Have, I would I would cut back on them. I would eat the fruit and. Uh, I would do that too. Yeah. You know, um, coconut water. Okay. There's uh, right? coconut there's something water. about fresh juices, uh, fruit juices, um, that uh, I don't believe it's uh, um, helps the body in the long run uh, to bring balance because uh, yeah. uh, we've all come from those uh, those yeah. days and. Uh, your it's with the fiber. Uh, yeah there's uh you know we're the only purpose we're using the juice for is to is to purge right at the mental uh, physical mental emotional level because the, the cooked juice has all that it's 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 the fields that really what we're after the physicality is just there to assist us in this plane but um we're after the fields and the raw juice just doesn't have that it tastes can, great and everything you can have them occasionally no big deal you can have the cooked juice though i mean that's what we do in the days we eat right the days we eat, we have the ice. I have my tea, and then I have my juice. Um, uh, you do any the concord grape? Green juice? I do a lot of. I do do over the years. I've done. You know, I started out doing that. You know, juices, so fruit, but a lot of green juices, and I still do the green juices too. Um, yeah, greens are. Yeah, you know, I, I think my body's kind of adjusted to that, or that, what is it called, law of vital adjustment, <laughs> where uh, you know it's just it it does well on light. You know, like whatever it is, I, I, I could switch to, you know, cooked juice, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy. The yeah, you have abundance there. And that, yeah, but it's just a fermentation issue, I would say. I would not, that for that, for that reason, I wouldn't do the raw juices. Um, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, with the raw juices, the, it's not the same as with the Concord grape juice, it helps you release. But the raw juices, they don't really help you release uh, the raw fruit juices. Uh, green juice is okay because it's not sweet, you know, it's not going to um, ferment really. Um, but the but the sweet raw juices, I would say, are... I would do coconut water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do a lot of coconut water. Well, I mean, just he'll go and he'll get them and then uh, there's a coconut water lady. And so we do, we enjoy coconut water here it's so it's right out of the coconut you know and we do enjoy it yeah and then uh, i would eat the fruits so what, this is what i do i like uh i have my tea i have my tinctures as well on the days i eat and then i uh the concord grape juice with lemon juice and then um we have uh like a meal of fruit and then a meal of vegetables um is either raw or cooked we, uh, we don't really care too much uh, although yeah we feel much better eating raw like salads, um, and we have zero fat in our food, zero fat. That's like, yeah, the, the, like right now I've been, today is day 58, I think, um, zero fat, and I've been only eating my food, nobody else's food. I make the food either uh, salads or cooked vegetables. I, I don't mind, honestly, I wouldn't mind eating quinoa or chickpeas sometimes um, over, Nuts, seeds, avocados, oils, these we don't buy at all. We never buy. They're obstructive and addictive. I yeah. Would, you know, I feel it's less obstructive. So raw is not always like the best, you know, uh, like, um, you know, if you, I go to a raw restaurant, I get obstructed. Oh yeah, the, the, a lot of nuts. Yeah. Mm. Nuts and seeds, sometimes Seven. oil, <laughs> avocados. All the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's addictive, and I don't know. It doesn't feel well. I don't feel well. Yeah, lighter is better. Is, you know, Less is more. So really, the only change would be the fruit juice in the morning. You know, I could just switch that up with. I just, I really enjoy a glass of what you know, mandarin juice with. Yeah, the, it's great. Cook it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, expand. expand it. Really. Allow the dries to expand. Open, let them, allow them to open up. <laughs> like, uh, are you eating seven days a week? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I don't think anybody should be eating more than five days a week. Like, uh, you're, you have that uh, little bit of fear of your weight, but you know, as you've just said, in 108 days, you only went so far down, and. Um, um, did you do what was the next longest one you did? Uh, let me see. Do you remember? I did. Okay, here we go. Everybody. My okay, I did 108, 13, 24, 9, 
30, 12, and then two fours. So after that, the longest was 30. Okay. What, how much weight did you lose in 30? Mm, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really measure. Most people who've done uh, several 108 days or 108 and other long ones, they, don't lose as they never lost uh, nowhere near as much as they did on their first one. I think in my mind, I... Yeah, it's, you got something, you got to let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> building, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you, if you want muscles and you want strength, you have to just work out for it. And it's not going to come with food, that's for sure. Patience. I patience. mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see how food is going to give you muscles. I just don't see it or make you stronger. No, it's not. Yeah, and so that's where, yeah, I, I need, I, the working out. I just never exercised ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it. In my, in my, so, you walk, uh, right? You walk, you said? Yeah, but I mean, as far as really working out with the weights or I don't, I don't even, I don't know much. You're, you're doing freaking amazing. Doing so, uh, you know, there's always room for improvement is what I say. Always, no, no matter what we're doing, perfect. there's always room Absolutely. for improvement. And uh, we're just throwing in some stuff to uh, help you expand a little bit and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you show us some more miracles. Yeah, yeah like, we're, we're amazed really every time we see you. <laughs> Very inspiring. Awesome. So, guys, the floor is open. Everybody's quiet today. They're in. They're in shock. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh boy. We have to give them a chance. Give them a minute. Nobody? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Come on, guys. Anyone wants to share their own experience? I had my first all fruit day today. Nice. Since I've, all been, right. on, since I've been on Masterfest. Your first? My first. It's taken me this long to not eat vegetables. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <laughs> awesome. it's, it's 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 interesting like uh how uh our belief systems get in the way that's all it is and uh you know once we come to the realization it's no big deal <laughs> no big oh, take a long time to get off the the train of you know the mind yeah And I, I, I can't. I did um. Thirty nine hour dry. And I tell you, every time I do a dry, I don't care if it's twenty hours, thirty hours, forty hours. Within, within a half an hour of doing the bubbly, I'm on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, that stuff is just moving, man. How does it every smell? <laughs> Not pleasant. <laughs> yeah, after the dry, it doesn't smell good. Oh, that's that's awesome. Your body's working very efficiently. And, uh, I don't think it's ever come out of the purging mode since since the first fast. It's come out of the fasting mode, but not the purging mode. Mm, interesting. Oh. Do you see yeah. any stuff like uh, what Kelly showed us? <laughs> not not quite that interesting yet. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, in the colonics, there's been some things come out. Yeah. Yeah, with the colima, it's harder. It's, just, it's hard to see. With yeah, the but in the colonics, because I still do a monthly colonic, yeah. even though I have the colima. Nice. Yeah. It's uh, much more uh, water going through. Good, oh, yeah. And I can, I can, she can fill me up too. It's, it's crazy. I can't fill here like she does. Un unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the best colonic that I've ever had was with uh, Rana. <laughs> In fact, um, yeah, I didn't feel comfortable. I, I I messaged you about that with the lady with the lady here. Uh, I would love to get a Klima board down here. Oh yeah. We will. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have it at home. 
Yeah, when you have, have uh, everything at home, it's nice. Oh yeah, real nice. Somebody had asked me to share about my birth and if someone had died before or after me. Um, and then I think they were just trying to see, you know, what happened in the family through generations that were out of the ordinary, like early deaths, adoptions, miscarriages and stuff. And yeah, a lot of that did go on, you know, within generations uh, through my family. Uh, my grandmother was, uh, her parents died at a young age. And so she had to take care of herself uh, when she was around 15 or 16. And then my grandfather was, um, he was adopted. This is on my mom's side. And uh, his mother, got, she was pregnant when she was unwed and back then, you know, that was uh, uh, looked down upon. So she gave my grandfather up for adoption and uh, the family that, well, and then after, I just found this out because my aunt found his family after all these years, he had wanted to find his family. She just found out, found them. And uh, that's why that 23 and me and all that. Um, and she just found his, uh, his family and found out that she named so after she, after she gave him up for adoption she uh, she had another child and named him the same name James and mm. so then um, my uncle I believe was his middle name was James and then just recently my cousin named his child James so this name is being you know pet not really we didn't even know why you know like oh we named the baby James so I feel like those emotions that were connected to the trauma of her having to give her child away were passed down and we didn't even realize like all the, and so my grandfather felt like he never belonged, you know, really, at least according to my mother, you know, to a family. And uh, so that feeling of uh, not fitting in that, you know, not being loved was passed down to my mother. And myself, you know, I felt that too. I felt out of place, you know, not part of a family. Uh, and then uh, my my dad's side, I'm a kind of estranged from, so I'm not quite sure, you know, as far as that. But uh, and then my grandfather also uh, grew up during the de depression, so his he was adopted by a wealthy family. They lost all their money. He, you know, experienced that trauma of not, you know, that feeling of lack, that was passed down from generation to generation. I even, you know, am a bit frugal, you know, I can sense, you know, have a sense of lack if I'm in that fear state, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, but the beauty of all this is, is when you transcend, the moral of the story is none of this really matters when you realize that you are not a story. You are not, you are not any of this any of this you transcend that and when you're in the present moment in that state in that beautiful state none of this matters the past doesn't matter the future worrying about the future doesn't matter all you have is right now so uh but when you can get to the point where you can share these stories right without that emotionally charged connection then you're i feel like you're you're free um yeah. You Before I could talk about a lot of this stuff, you know, like on my first interview. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't share it without just bawling, you know, just crying. And uh, you, you do, you realize that uh, you are not it. Yeah. No, no. Right. So I think that's the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> We, 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 we carry all the emotions from our ancestors so but, we can add to the imbalance or bring balance back to all of them because we're part of them we can't be separate and it's just the, the fields it's nothing to do with uh, 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 the physicality it's uh, it's it's the uh, we are mm -hmm. the, flat, the, the fields the energy we are part of them but we, at the same time we can just be you know kind of realize that uh, at the end of the day we're all one and we are not exactly uh, trapped you know we're not trapped we're, we're just exactly. experiencing something and you're observing it and i love how you say uh, 
when you're healing yourself, you're healing the, you know, the, the, ge the generations before you. So I thought it was interesting how that came up, how my aunt found out all this information, you know, and I could, I can, I can connect it, you know, looking back, especially with my mother, you know, and myself up until, it's you know. It's a, totally amazing. Yeah. Kurt has a question here. I just noticed um, if memory is correct from your first interview. Oh, he's been watching. You were on the pharmaceutical psychiatrics. Have you noticed any physical or cognitive changes related to that? Absolutely. To the, I mean, <laughs> since the tapering, I'll assume he means since the tapering. Um, more. Oh, wow. I, I had a hard time forming words. Um, you can ask Gary. Uh, I had a hard time forming words um, during the tapering. Um, oh man, it was it was the roughest experience of my life. I feel like I went through that experience um, because I well I need I I had something to learn. I was very um, judgmental. And I didn't understand what my mom was going through at the time because she was a prescription addict. And, uh, and I was very angry. And I didn't understand how difficult it would have been for her to physically come off. She was literally on, oh, wow, like a pharmacy, you know, a day, just pills and just, oh, wow. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, it affected my definitely my memory um, I uh, ever since you know I've it's been three and a half years since I've been off the meds um, I feel like a lot of the symptoms that I did have besides you know the genetic ones you know and, and some of the others but like the POTS where your autonomic nervous system is shutting down you know I had a hard time breathing um, you know sleeping uh, a lot of that has subsided. You know, I had uh, severe breathing issues. Um, man, when you're tapering, you just, there were times where you couldn't even sleep through the night. You know, you couldn't even get through the night. Um, it was so rough. I, you know, I backed into the garage door because I didn't sleep the night before and I had to go to work. I don't know how I tapered off these drugs. I was on the clonopin, uh, clonopin, the Fexer, and gabapentin and wow. so gabapentin yeah and uh, the gabapentin was uh, a really high dose and uh, that that was the toughest times for me with going through all that but uh, I there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel it was day by day you know minute by minute uh, that there was a lot of times where I would just you know, sit in the bath. I couldn't put my feet in the bath at the time because my feet were still kind of burning, but I would sit in there and just meditate with, you know, I used Eckhart Tolle at the time, you know, just staying in the present, you know, transcending all this pain, you know, from the withdrawal, uh, taking it really slow, you know, just uh, each drug was, well, the last two drugs were over a year of tapering. Uh, I don't know if he's on you know, a, a psych med, but, um, you know, there's a, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. You probably can't see it, you know, right now when you're in the middle of it, but try to transcend, you know, just, uh, if you can stay present, uh, the breathing, you know, focus on your breathing. Sorry. That helps a lot. You know, the, the, the slowing down your breathing. Yeah. Hey, this is Kurt. Hey, Kurt. Yeah. Um, I was on them like I've been off them for probably seven years, but I was on the injection of a uh, antipsychotic for like two and a half years, and I quit cold turkey. Not really <laughs> consciously. Yeah. I yeah. I I don't. It was more I was doing emotional work at the time. Didn't have a whole lot of knowledge of the physical. Uh aspects of it but um i just you know obviously felt really numb at the time and wanted to get off but the only 
major challenges I seem to have are when I started getting into doing some juice cleansing, uh, I, I started to feel my brain dumping and the magnetic almost draw that the GI tract was pulling on it or whatnot. And now that I've started doing the master fast lifestyle, uh, weekly, I, that is the main issue. I kind of feel, uh, pretty much constantly, you know, I, on the fasting days and the dries, I feel it a lot more. And one of the major challenges is just, I find brain fog and, uh, trouble focusing and obviously affecting emotions. So I was just curious when you started fasting, opposed to the tapering process, did you notice uh, symptoms or uh, those drugs releasing or, or whatnot? Yes, I did. Um, at the time when I was doing the drug tapering, I was on um, Dr. Morris's protocol. And I noticed when I would go into, so I was just, um, I was eating, I was eating uh, salads and some cooked vegetables. I was trying to maintain balance at the same, you know, at the same time of the drug taper. And I noticed when I went into a, just a juice fast that I just was at, almost out of my mind. I couldn't go very long. Um, and I noticed when I would, cause I was, I don't know about you, but I had, um, I was doing a bead taper. So the effector was actually um, in a capsule with beads. So I would take these beads out, you know, one by one. Oh my gosh, I was so determined to get off this stuff. I would, <laughs> I would open up the, the capsules and, you know, count the beads one by one at the beginning. My gosh, how many, I can't remember how many beads, but it's like, geez, keeping track of this, you know, and your mind is just, you couldn't focus, you know, you were having panic. I was having panic attacks. Um, it, it was really challenging, but so I noticed when I was on the juice fast that um, the beads that I did, you know, that I did take, uh, when I was on the juice fast, I wasn't, my body wasn't absorbing those beads. So I, they were kick. my body was kicking them out. Well, I needed those beads to maintain that, you know, that, that balance because one little bead, if I, you know, if I took out one too many beads, then it just sent me over the, the edge, just completely wow. over the edge. Um, so here I am, I'm on this juice fast, my body's spitting out what I need to keep in because I'm already making that reduction, you know, of these beads. Um, so I quickly saw that, you know, while tapering this, this, it wasn't working for me, you know, I needed however many beads. So if I'm down to four beads and my body's spitting out one bead, I just jumped myself from three, you know, from however many, five beads down to three where it should have been four. If, I hope I'm making sense. Gary was mentioned he, one beat every two weeks, he remembers? Yeah, um, probably. We got to that. And then at the end, wow. I, how many? Yeah, I see him in there. One beat, it made a huge difference. How one many? little beat. And so my body, as I'm, my body's, I, probably because it's toxic, you know, these, this medicine is toxic, toxic. So my body's, while I'm on just this juice fast, it's spitting out. It doesn't want it. You know, I'm taking these beads. I need them because I'm I'm trying to maintain, you know, an emotional, you know, to stabilize. I'm trying to stabilize. Uh, I'm trying to maintain this balance, but my body's spitting out these beads. I need these beads right now. You know, I want to get rid of them, but you know, at a slow rate. Oh, there's a gnat. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, when you're on a fasting mode, you're also purging what's the what's stored in the body. Yeah, on top of that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I thought, oh, I've kind of gotten off these. My challenges are done. Not really seeing all those years. I still had severe emotional imbalance. But now it's like, okay, all that stuff was locked up. It was never released yeah. in the seven years since I quit it because uh, I wasn't really fasting. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've noticed, you know, uh, early on. But you know what I feel like really helps is uh, when I'm on Master Fest, the plasma pudding, you know, it really helps uh, soak up or, or you know, uh, the toxins that your body's expelling. Oh my gosh, if you, if I forget it during, you know, like, uh, not the day, but like, say I'm uh, two hours late, I know, you know, I, I can, I can feel it, you know, because it's really pulling and it's uh, absorbing, I guess, or 
how would you describe it? You know, the, yeah. it's moving it out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because, uh, you know, that why all parts of the system we say are crucial for safety and effectiveness. They're all there for a reason. Um, for drugs and all kinds of other things that uh, it helps uh, draw into itself as it's going through your GI tract. <clears throat> you know, the, the herbs, they keep the channels of energy open uh, emotionally, mentally, physically. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the enemas we wash out. So we, once the fast uh, puts these things in, back into whatever circulation you want to call it, um, we want it out as quick as possible, mm -hmm. and that's so. You know, that's why the, the, the system is 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 very um, a simple concept of understanding of how the body functions and what it does uh, uh, during a fast. It, it, it's purging, and we want things out, and we assist in that, and that's all we do in Master Fast. Nothing more, nothing less. We can't do anything but assist because the body knows what to do. But the challenge is um, today's man, humanity, is so plugged up with foreign substances. It's, it, it just gets overwhelmed uh, when, it's third, when we, we get into a fasting mode. And uh, that's uh, where we uh, need to be prudent and be careful. But uh, Kurt, um, keep digging. Yeah, and uh, I would say wash your colon even more. Make, yeah, make meticulous notes of what you need to do and just... Um, uh, focus on using the tools when you have challenging days and, and just keep going. Is, is it, when's it going to end? I don't know. Six and, months? And a year? Two years? I don't know. And that's so. slow. Right? You're, doing two, you're doing two days a week. That's like, that's quite mild. You know, imagine you're going like, <laughs> you know, you're going for a long one, that, you know, so your body's releasing. So, yeah, and I, want to add, I want to add something. And also, at the time, I didn't have the tools. You know, back then, I didn't have, I didn't, I hadn't done enemas, you know, that wasn't introduced to me until later. So, wow, that really would have been helpful. Um, oh, yeah. During that time. You know, at the end, I started, you know, I think it was during the effects or taper, but uh, the first two drugs, you know, I didn't, I didn't do it. And it was, it, it was rough. All of them were rough, you know, all three drugs. Yeah, you have to assist the body. Fasting without animals, I've I've tried it in the past. Uh, no way, man. It's much easier to fast when you're doing animals. <laughs> it's that's why we and this and a master fast because it, it's it's such a strong purge. Don't 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 even tempt. Just just go go do something else. It's 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 it's, it's not it's not smart. It's not smart. Yeah, no, without uh, it's it's to, such a strong purging. Um, the whole system that we want, we have to assist washing out. If we lived in a pristine environment, there was no chemicals, no drugs, and we ate, you know, only fruit and some, and some salad for a whole lifetime, you probably wouldn't need to do any of this. But we don't, we don't. We, there's no planet, and there's no place on this planet that is not contaminated by man's uh, synthetic chemicals. There's not one speck on this planet left. And yes, yes, and yes. Sad, but that's certainly reality. So mm -hmm. We got, we got, we got so many tools. You know, the breath. Oh, by the way, yeah, many people uh, on the Master Fast come from. Um, there's a good number of people who are on the Master Fast who used to take, um, uh, like, uh, psychiatric. psychiatric. Oh, of all kinds of people. Many people. It's like. 70% of the population in North America is on some kind of pharmaceutical. It's, it's just, really it's just insane. You know, they're putting, they're putting animals on psychiatric drugs. I couldn't believe it. Pets. I know. Where, where, where are we going? Babies. <laughs> Babies. No? Yeah. Young children, but you know, pets too. Animals like, okay, we're gone. <laughs> pregnant women, they sit, you know, some of them are, they say that it's okay to take these, some of these psych meds while they're pregnant. Yeah. Sure. Get the Crazy. get the in, the the fetus hooked, so That's they have a customer for life, for that life of that child when it was actually born. yeah. Now that I think about it, I forgot my mom was on Valium when she she got prescribed it. I think when she was nineteen and she was pregnant with me, you know, and she didn't stop taking you know those drugs. So yeah, yeah. So I was yeah. born addicted. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, you could say I, that. <laughs> uh, one of my clients um, had had IBS. I, I don't know how they diagnosed IBS, but in my opinion, everybody has inflammation in their bowels. Um, but anyways, she got diagnosed by maybe, maybe her medical doctor that she has IBS. And so he prescribed her antidepressants because there is a blood a brain gut connection this was the excuse there's a gut brain connection so let's give them something for their brain because their gut is not happy it, like it, it, i told her in my opinion <laughs> all the way around <laughs> you're full of caca clean it out <laughs> susan uh, thank you kelly very inspiring i am purging toxins from antidepressants 35 years mm. challenging to say the least thank you so much yeah no big deal susan keep you're going doing amazing yeah susan you're doing yeah. Amazing. keep going yeah. look what kelly's it's overcome been that the, that just stay in the moment i literally went second by second by second at mm -hmm. times yeah um you know how do you how do you um put the information to somebody's mind that um, this is a, a, a simple way that we can use in our life to um, find balance. It's until they've gone through the experiences, um, they can listen to a thousand interviews of like this and uh, they're really not gonna understand until they go through it. And when they go through it, some people get go into the fear mode, even though they've listened to other people and, that, and that's the thing where the support system that's why we're here. So you can, you can say, listen, this is all part of the journey. Just keep going. Use the tools. Keep using tools. Slow down. Go into green juices. Back off on the dry a little bit. Whatever. <laughs> There's so many tools. More washing. More you know, colonics. Go get colonics. It's always the same thing. You know, what about this? It's the same thing. What about that? It's the same thing. All these fiction names from the big pharma, you know, the pharma cartel, they're, fiction, they're fictitious diseases. Is the body can only see imbalance and balance. Choose how you want to live, and the soul will direct it to find balance. It's going to take what it takes. And uh, see, even the cat knows. It's going to take what it takes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Love it's, oh yeah but yeah this is uh it's such an honor to have you here back you know it's uh yeah it's so lovely. share your story it's just awesomeness um you're doing freaking amazing you know <laughs> From, absolutely i remember when you came here you know you're telling you know you already uh we're progressing from, you know, changing the diet and stuff. And you were ex ex getting ex off the ex drugs. excited to, uh, you know, get on MFS and so on and so forth. And now looks at you about the, it's, I think it's about three years later. It's about about since three. you came here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Our meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so. And really, that's another thing. Um, when, when you want to do something, do it. You know, do it 100% dive in, learn as much as you can, learn it to the point where you can explain it, yeah. you know, um, and uh, keep repetition, keep repeating, you know, repeating, repeating. So I'm repeating it, you know, um, yeah, what, whatever it is, you know, and then examine your thoughts. You know, what it, a lot of people are, you know, that, they're, they're complaining about, you know, why haven't I healed? You know, they're, they're worried about just enjoy it. Just go through the process, you know, expand instead of contract your focus, you know, on what isn't working, I guess, what isn't working. Cause you know, this isn't working. That isn't working. What's going, you know, what's going well, you know, instead of focusing on, the challenges. You know, yeah. yeah, the challenges. I mean, not, not just, you know, downplay the challenges. But you know, as I say, when you got a healing reaction, jump for joy because you always come out stronger. Always, always. When you're fasting state, you get a healing reaction, you jump for joy. You know, it's, it doesn't feel good. 
yeah some people have worse than others you know depending what they went through in their lives and generational challenges as well so um yeah so yeah just in you're not just changing you're changing your the entire being if you know you're what you're what you're thinking like my entire life changed the moment that I was so emotionally charged about making the decision to change that everything just fell into place after that. It was so charged. I was just, I was like, I am not, I am not going to live like this the rest of my life. I am not, you know, I didn't know how at the time, you know, things were going to change, but then everything, everything started changing all at once. You know, because I was a new, I'm putting out new energy, the old energy, you know, I'm putting out new energy. So I'm attracting new experiences. So, you know, everything from my job, my relationships, friendships, every single thing about my life changed because I changed. Yeah. I, yeah. You made a decision. You, you didn't get stuck in the poor me syndrome. It, you started with a strong decision <laughs> and that kept you going and you never looked back. I think it, it yeah. has, you have to be ready. You have to make a strong decision that that's it. I don't care how bad it's going to be. I'm going to continue. Yeah, it has to be a strong decision. It, for everybody, it was different. For me, it was something that, uh, an experience that, you know, when I did raw food and I detoxed, like I, I purged from every opening in my body, just fruits and vegetables for a week. And I saw it came out. I was like, holy crap, I can't believe this. And I said to myself, I don't mind eating this way for the rest of my life. Now, I didn't know much about fasting back then, but just that I purged from my lungs. I had like asthma. That's just one week, I think. I don't remember, but I th about one week, my nose was like nonstop running, my eyes releasing a lot of mucus. I had to touch the walls at night because my eyes were, were shut closed. This is one week of eating fruits and vegetables. And that, I, and I read a little bit about cleansing, de like detox symptoms. I was like, okay, this is, I'm detoxing. And I said to myself, I, I can't believe it. This is, you know, I don't mind eating this way for the rest of my life. I feel better just one week. And so it was this strong decision that I would not look back. I won't, I will not look back. Um, yes, I will make mistakes, but I will not go back to my old ways. Um, and be satisfied with my old ways. I have found something new and I'm sticking to it. And you know, for everybody it's different. For you, Gino, it was the mucus was diet book, right? Arnold Ayer, Arnold Ayer's book. Thirty yeah, years was, ago. And somebody uh, handed me that. And, and you, you, that's it, that was a the decision. Light, the light went on when I started reading, yeah. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for you, Kelly, it was something else. Um, I don't know how you got into it, but maybe you were sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and, and just- Oh yeah, and then, yeah, and then they, once I made that decision, then the answer, the answer came, you know? And then it led me to this, it led me to that, you know? And then here I am, you know? And yeah, exactly. I feel like we're, yeah, we're, we're learning, we're, yeah. Who knows what we'll learn? You know, I'm sure we'll learn more as we go go along. You know, we're oh, we're, <laughs> we're always learning. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> never stops. Honestly, I I feel like you know, if you look, you will find the truth. You don't really have to look too hard. Um, first, you have to ask for help. You really have to ask God. I feel for help. You know, like when you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, you say, you say, okay, I'm confused. I'm tired, and then slowly you start seeing answers, and you get exposed to this and exposed to that, uh, and it's a it's a journey. Um, and you either t take the opportunities and grow, or you don't. You know, but the the truth is there, and the answers are there, and the you know the internet is full of information. Yes, good and like bad, maybe you know. Uh, but you know what, if you look deep enough, you will find the truth. If you keep searching, you will find the truth. Yeah, there was that, 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 that Portuguese movie somebody posted a, a couple months ago or so. Mm -hmm. It was about somebody's experience through the astral plane and dying. It's, 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 all the stuff in there is very, 
in line with uh, what we talk about in Masterclass. It was an, it was an interesting movie. If, if I got to find the name of it, it's, it, everybody should watch it. But if, I it's, uh, it. it's got subtitles, but uh, it's a it's it's a good uh, good movie. Uh, I think, and the more you clear out, the more in tune and intuitive you are as well. Oh, it's so many. Oh, big time. Yeah, it's there's no comparison. <laughs> um, just the, the bodily senses, like uh, my body, so so sensitive. Like uh, for example, if I have fat, um, I will feel what's what it may take somebody twenty, thirty years to feel with with one meal of fat, because my senses have, have opened up and I can feel them. Um, you know, people are, are in such a numbed out state that they're doing they're, they're they're you know bombarding their body every day in and day out. And they don't feel any different because uh, they're in that numbed out state, and until eventually that you know they get a heart attack or whatever. Um, so it's it's a big difference when you uh, start cleaning out and and how your uh, senses open up and in all in, in all levels, physical, mental, emotional. Everything starts flowing. Uh, you're more in tune. You have more uh, instinct. Uh, more uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Uh, intuition. Your intuition yeah, it's, opens it's, up. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's awesome. Yeah, and we want to learn how to uh, balance our energy. You know, like uh, yes, we can feel amazing, but we have like I feel like it's important to learn how to, um, you know, uh, for us to find our balance with this high energy and and do mm -hmm. the best, you know, live our dreams and um, follow our hearts with with the energy and find the balance you know uh, fasting eating if you're gonna eat you know um well you're you enjoy know, the you're, journey of course you're, you're you're you know you're you're maintaining you're, you're continuously uh doing the uh, regular fat master fast which is excellent um hans has a, a question here hi kelly thank you very much for your highly inspirational story what were your emotional milestones in this lifestyle and which tools helped you the most going through going through them emotional milestones. oh my gosh there were so, <laughs> so many <laughs> you know before i started this uh you know the master fast lifestyle i did a lot of work with a woman um who helped me energetically so the breaking the energe energetic um, bonds, I guess, to a lot of the emotions. Um, so, yeah, I, that's a loaded question. Is, it, is how did she help you uh, by talking or? I think you mentioned her last. No, time. not talk therapy. No, um, man, I don't know how to describe what she does. It, it's hands on type of thing yeah 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 um sort of like uh, what's her name Bar uh, uh, what's her woman name? Like Reiki? is it barbara eden or something or? she could she could uh man she would just hold my pulse you know and uh we would go back in time it's so hard to describe oh okay. but she, she could pinpoint you know a time a year like up to the year where something happened yeah. and then she had a way of helping me really in every session i would go away feeling just lighter and and this is when i was literally burning alive like i you know i hadn't been introduced to any of this stuff yet. right so uh and then also she introduced me to um hugh which is a love song to god uh when you sing this you connect your your heart opens, and uh, it's you connect your heart to you know to God. And the more that I did that, the more that I saw change you know changes. And actually, that's when the answer came to me um, when Dr. Morris was introduced. Uh, everything just changed after that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, which tools helped you the most? Uh, that's one of them. But once you started going, oh yeah, well, meditation. Lifestyle. I would call it right. So no, once you were in the lifestyle, you know what? 
else started happening. Which yeah. cool. <laughs> so the tools of Masterfest? Oh, wow. I use probably all of them. <laughs> or, you know, most of them. You know, castor oil. Oh, we're talking about emotions, though. Well, it's all connected, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. But I would say... Uh, being in that state, being in that heart brain, you know, coherence. I didn't know there was, you know, you could measure that, but, but being in that, being in that state for sure, uh, has helped tremendously. Amazing. Yeah, we you know, you know, when you're in that state, you know, um, yeah, it's uh, it's, really it's an cool. awesome place to be. Yeah, and so for 40 years I was in that I was in that that uh fight or flight and wow, you know, even my my gosh, you know, the heart rate, the breathing fast, uh even I I moved my bowels. So I went to the I went to the bathroom way more than the average person. Everything was just so revved up. You know, my everything was tense, contracted. I was just an absolute, all the time, nervous wreck. Just completely. Amazing. Yeah. Huge transformation. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you accessing different realms as well? <laughs> I would probably say so, yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, there, there are times where I realize that we're not, I, I, it's hard to describe, but um, like at this, I was in class, we were in Dr. Morris's training and I, I realized that I'm listening to him on one level and then the next level, I've li- like at the same time, I'm listening. He's saying something else about something else. I, so yeah, I, I feel like maybe there is no space or time, you know, it, it, it time. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, just the dream state. I've had a lot of a lot of dreams that have been very. Um, you know, guiding. Um, there was when I was, you know, I was sick and I was, I started Dr. Morris's protocol and I was asleep and out of a deep sleep, I, um, I was, you know, it woke me up and it was my ex's voice and he was saying, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about getting a divorce. And this is before, I don't know how many months, you know, that, uh, so, you know, there, if you listen, you know the mm-hmm. answers are in plain sight. Yeah, so I was I was able to prepare myself, you know, for that. I knew, you know, I wasn't as shocked, you know, when it did occur. In this, wow. yeah. Everybody wants to listen to you, Kelly. <laughs> 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 That's why you're here. (laughs) (laughs) Any other questions? I think we're good, no? Oh, Gary just typed in Dr. Morris. Oh, so I, I think I'd already told this story, the story that even brought me here. I had, I was having many, many dreams. And I had the dream about the uh, the sphere of light. So we're in a classroom, and Dr. Morris is, you know, in the front of the classroom, and um, all I could see were like, um, you know, just sparkles, lights. And um, so he's spin- he's taking his hand and he's spinning it, and so there's a sphere of light, and then off of that there's another sphere, and it's just, you know, kind of continuing spheres of light energy, and. Uh, I never forgot that it was so real and just I was in such awe and uh, so then when I came across Masterfest and you were talking about you know plasma energy and and uh, so that to me was 
you know, the sign. Oh yeah, and then he said, we will learn about this later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so when, yeah, so when I came across it, I'm like, wow, here I am. Yeah. Anything else? Or? Are you Are you guys? Uh, how are you guys doing? Is Gary as well? Do do does the master fast with you? He, no, and that's another thing. Well, he does it at his own pace. Mm -hmm. So after he had the uh, after he had well, we had an you know I think well you know Gina he had a, a wake up call and it was ironic because it was the uh, the anniversary of my mother's death mm. that, that Gary had this wake up call mm. and uh, he, you know, we're up at a high altitude and uh, he was having heart palpitations severe. And uh, so he didn't know if he was going to, you know, he was, he was really afraid. And so he contacted Gino uh, the next morning. Uh, but uh, yeah, he thought he was, he's typing. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. I'm reading what he's saying. Um, oh my gosh. Okay, so so after that, he jumped on Master Fast. I want to say was it thirty? Gary, do you know? It was thirty, thirty-five around thirty-five days. He did uh, minimal drives. You know, he was having a real hard time. He jumped on green juices. Mm -hmm. He was doing a lot. He did. He went in clonics. You know, uh, enemas. And after that, his uh, palpitations subsided. You know, no palpitations. Uh, uh, what else? He'd have to tell you everything. But uh, overall, he's, you know, he's reading down some stuff. But also, his, his was his dad was sick or passed? I can't remember now. Oh wow! And his dad did pass. Yes. He passed. He okay. Yeah. 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 So that's that <laughs> that's why we're connected, right? And that's a lot of emotion coming through. So there's everything yeah. happening there. Yes. And uh, for him. He uh, okay. So after he did that, I noticed that people were saying he looked younger too, as well. You know, <laughs> so that was kind of kind of neat. Um, so we're not on the same page, and uh, and really, when you know, we're both we both eat very similar. So it's it's challenging. So when I was on my 108 days, he was not you know fasting, and I would come down and he's cooking. You know, he was. You know that kind of got him into the mess to begin with he was cooking vegetable you know i could smell it uh bread vegan bread i just it was it was kind of like we were the opposite at the time and um but when we're you know when we're in uh in the group together it's really nice so you know when he did the 35 i did a third i did 30 at the same time that was really nice so it's nice to get kind of in the same yeah, same thing, but we're kind of, sometimes we're like this, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really hard. It's very personal, isn't it? Like Gino and I are really always doing it together. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and you don't know how the other person's emotions, you know, are affecting them and, and whether they're ready to do, you know, the fast when you are. But we do plan on, well, I'm going to eat just strictly fruit for a few days and then just do a week together, you know, in a couple of days is what we had planned. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, slowly, you know, everybody has, you know, to go at their own pace initially, and then slowly, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, we'll all catch up, you know. Yeah, catch avoid up. killing each other, both emotions <laughs> going cuckoo. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, food wise, <laughs> we, you know, we only go shopping on Saturday and we prepare food for Saturday, Sunday. Um, sometimes I don't eat Saturday, I just eat on Sundays and, um, uh, sometimes I do, but yeah, so that's what we've been doing. So preparing food only on Saturday, Sunday, Sat Saturday for Sunday as well. Um, and this, I think, maybe helps you not eat during the day, right? During the week, right? Because I'm, I'm at work and I'm fasting during the week, right? I don't know. Do you fast during the week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So most of the time he's fasting, I guess, during the week. Sometimes he eats fruits, I think. Yeah, with relationships, like um, in my previous relationship, oh my cat, 
in my previous relationship, it was easy because he ate foods that I did not want, you know, like pizza, burgers, French fries, you know, but when you're with, you think that when you're, oh, I would love a vegan partner, which I do love, you know, that Gary and I are on the same page, but it's funny because we can be tempted easier, you know, yeah. oh, I'm, that's not, you know, or that looks good or, you know, so, yeah. uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah. You agree on what is tempting and what is not. <laughs> Vegan gourmet, addictive as cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Love. You know, I think it's the same emotions. It's the same thing with food as with alcohol. You know, it's very similar. Yes. You know? it's, like, yep. <laughs> the, you know, the, the more obstructive, the more addictive. It's, it's just, it's incredible. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, That's why once you start eating, obstructive food you know not so optimal you're trapped so it's much harder to get back on you know the uh, clean eating routine and fasting yeah you know we, we all go through phases and so on and so forth and cycles and, and yeah. it's, it's all part of the journey just as long as we're learning we understand that and we continue that's it you just never give up and always get up keep going yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah that's the uh, one thing yeah. All right. Anybody else? Or can we, we want to wrap it up? <laughs> Speak now, forever hold your peace. <laughs> tomorrow is new moon. Yeah, tomorrow's a new moon, so set your intent. Yeah. For the full moon coming. Jump in your three-day dry. Yeah, new moon first. So you can fly. <laughs> for your 24 hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <But> we <laughs> you got to start somewhere and um don't be uh discouraged about what other people are doing you just got to go at the pace that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. slightly uncomfortable you know you got to always allow it to hours. open up a little more a little more, a little hours more. Every month extra. And, uh, you, you'll all get there it's just um if one person can do it anybody can do it and even if one person didn't do it, we, you just have to wait until somebody's brave enough to go to that, 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 that state because everything's possible, right? <laughs> so we got we to gotta get those limitation belief systems out of us. And that's the most difficult part is the belief system. We're so conditioned about certain things and, and that's what uh, we, we take to our grave a lot of us. So um, once we uh, understand we can... Um, work it with it and expand you know, like the dry fast in my first three day dry fast my goodness gracious it was <laughs> it was tough yeah. you know and then my first five day holy geez it was really tough and my first seven day you know the, the last day was really tough I, I remember and then uh, from seven I ended up going to 12 because you know the barriers of the belief system kept you know opening up okay man okay okay and you, 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 you feel, you know, what, what you're going to expect and uh, you keep going. But um, anybody can do it. It's just uh, um, a matter of, uh, from my point of view, is um, the belief system for sure, but also the obstructions in the physical body, which, uh, which uh, make it more challenging and um it's also the, the emotions always attached to it so depending on our uh, ancestors and so on and so forth our lifestyle our environments there's a lot of things that influence these things but um it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um look at what's possible look what's mm -hmm. how you transform completely metamorphosize uh, kelly like thank you so much for for sharing and you know coming uh, back and updating us on how you're doing it's just so amazing. Wow. It's, uh, <laughs> this is why I keep doing. This is why I keep doing what I'm doing because of people like you. Um, if uh, you know, if we uh, if we had to uh, listen and make what other people's thinking our business, we wouldn't be here right now. And and you know. Uh, we, we are not the story. We are much greater. We are, we are of the light. 
we are, you know, uh, a consciousness uh, of, of much greater magnitude and it's limitless. Um, and we just have to come to that realization and, and, and from the, and that memory because uh, we come from there and uh, it's not something we have to learn. We just have to remember. And for some reason, when we come into this plane, all that memory is wiped out. And the more we go along, the more we forget. <laughs> so we just got to unplug ourselves up and uh, things start opening up again. Uh, that's what I found. And, and so many other people have uh, started and lived, living this journey of, or, you know, uh, reporting the same things. So we're on to something, uh, you know, great. And uh, let's keep going and uh, let's keep enjoying and let's keep jumping for joy and, and keep inspiring each other and keep supporting each other because uh, this is what it's all about. It's just uh, freaking amazing. And um, thank you so much for your precious time. And um, thank you. when are you coming back, Toronto? <laughs> oh, the next time we go to Maryland, I would love to. You come, come down to Ecuador. Yeah, yeah, I want to get away, but I'm in a mama situation that, that uh, is, uh, it puts, it's a lot of my time and energy and stuff, so, uh, you know, it's an honor, I'll complain about it, but it, it's an honor to take care of my mama, and uh, I will continue, um, but uh, it'll happen sooner or later, um, all is well. Um, all right, guys. Uh, All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming back and updating us. It's very, it's very nice to uh, to hear from people who have done it, in, you know, three years ago, uh, to know how you're doing now, and how you're, you know, still continuing to transform and release. <laughs> from Gary, love you, Kelly. Being with you, <laughs> greatest privilege of my life. Please. Oh, I love you. I love all of you. <laughs> yeah, you guys are blessed, both of you. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming and supporting. Uh, this is uh, always a beautiful pleasure to be with all of you, or I wouldn't be doing this. And uh, let's continue and show the world what's possible because uh, there's no limits. We there's no limits at all. Um, we, we, we are breaking all the belief systems and limits that people have perceived that uh, are make belief. So um, just keep going. Uh, in the next few years, we're going to see much greater things happening because we've just scratched the surface with this knowledge. We really have. Um, you know, before it was all about the diets and so on and so forth and raw foods and fasting and herbs. And uh, you're only going to get so far uh, as <laughs> thousands of people have experienced like myself. So we, uh, we, f we focus on the fields, that plaf, that plasma level always flowing and uh, get into that heart space and uh, mm -hmm. the art of subtraction, the gift of giving, and we continue to serve each other and uh, all is well. So uh, thank you so much again. Thank you. We'll see you all on the page and uh, next time. Uh, Thank you, Gary. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gary. Thanks, everybody else. Thank you, everyone. Keep that plasma love always flowing. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Beautiful soul. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you so much.